Welcome to Utah Stadium in Launceston for this round three clash in the Tasmanian State League footy between North Launceston and North Hobart. So top of the ladder, uh, North Launceston had a big start to the year, two big wins against Lauderdale, which is never easy down there, and also a huge win in uh, round one against Launceston at Windsor Park. North Hobart haven't started in the best of form. They went down by 59 points to Kimber in round one and then lost to Glenorchy, their first win in 1,015 days. Last Saturday, they went down by 10 points at North Hobart Oval. They'll be wanting to bounce back, and of course, North Launceston will want to go on their merry way. I'm Dave Moore, here on City Park Radio, and uh, pleased to be with you here this afternoon. And uh, Rob Soward, uh, welcome to you. Great to be here, and uh, hi Dave, hi listeners. And as you've beautifully summed up, Dave, the tale of two fortunes at the moment. North Launceston absolutely out of the gates uh, really, really quickly. A powerful win over Launceston at Windsor Park. Great win away last week. North Hobart would have been a bit disappointed, Dave. Very big improvers last year under uh, Adam Bester, who's got some great things happening down there. So they'd be disappointed with last week's result and the week before. So they'd be looking to bounce back today on the big ground here at Utah Stadium. Perfect additions and uh, it's going to be a wonderful game of footy. Dave Gruber, our stats man, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dave. And a really good contest between uh, two talented teams. North Launceston, a lot of young players, including uh, some Devils players we'll talk about in just a moment. Down at uh, ground level, we've got Chris Sayer, our boundary rider. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. Gee, this is a magnificent ground, isn't it? It's worth the price of admission just to see this ground, even when it's empty. It's like carpet out here. It's just amazing. Beautiful day, sunny day, 20 degrees. Slight wind if it's favouring anything. It's the southern end. Um, and uh, but it's just a really light breeze. They had done the toss, and there was, <laughs> I can't really tell you who won it because I didn't see anyone pointing. I think Alex Lee might have won the toss. We'll see where they line up, of course, <laughs> to see who's kicking where. But it's a glorious day. It'll be an interesting um, uh, game to see if North Hobart can uh, beat such a top side. Absolutely, Chris. So we'll hear from you during the day. Yes, North Hobart have come up here in recent years and played pretty well at Utah Stadium. It's a ground, I think, that suits them away from that sort of small confines of the North Hobart Oval. I mentioned the Devils players playing today. Um, there are some really good ones that I'm looking forward to seeing. It. Oliver Tapoli Kubank from the Northwest Coast, number 32. Harry Elmer, number 31, also uh, from Devonport. He's playing today. And Geordie Payne, who wasn't far away from being drafted, according to many scribes last year. Uh, number 16, he's in the team as well. Of course, Rob, that uh, strong North Launceston midfield, um, we saw in round one, they really tore it apart. Um, you know, they're going to be a key today to giving them the supply to score the goals. Yeah, they are, Dave. And uh, one of the, the, the hallmarks of this Northern Bombers side, not just this year, but in years past, is that strength through the midfield. Uh, so that will certainly be something you'd want uh, North Hobart to address today. Um, winning the ball out of the middle on this big ground and feeding it into that forward line to give your forwards first look is critical. So uh, we'll see what Adam Best has got up his sleeve to counteract that. Got a debutant today for North Hobart, Wilbur McMurray, number 49. Congratulations to Wilbur. He'll be uh, coming to the bench now. He'll be uh, pretty excited on his first senior game. Looking forward to seeing some of the newer players from North Hobart. RJ Watson impressed me last week. Also Nathan James from uh, Queensland from the Burley Football Club on the Gold Coast. Number 32, he looks uh, like a good-sized player lining up there in the forward line at the moment for North Hobart. Jack Sandwick in the middle for the Demons. Tyler McGuinness in the Rockets, Charlie Meadows. And for the Bombers, Oscar Van Dam in there. So Michael Stingle, Blake Sulzberger. Here we go, underway now, Utah Stadium, round three action, the Tasmanian State League. First bounce, Lee wins it, falls to the side of the contest, Dingle in there, handballs over the top, chance here for Sam Simpson, he's tackled from behind, aggressive tackling there, good work from Meadows, the big Ruckman, kick now towards half forward for North Hobart, fisted away from the contest by Bennett, here's Leaf Heber, at the base of the pack, clear now by North Launceston, and it's punched away there from Oliver Dipoli Kubank, out of play. So we've got a boundary throw in far side. Makes me wonder if they're not doing a job on Sandrick either. He's really important for North Hobart. Hence Van Dam's gone to him. Smaller body, but uh, terrific athlete, young Van Dam. So uh, we'll see how that unfolds, Dave. Sulzberger on McGuinness. We got that uh, heavy knock last year in the state game against Queensland. Next Tassie Devil, really talented player. So we've got the ball over the fence. Oscar Van Dam has to climb over into the grandstand. Retrieve... Jack Sandrick, might, Jack Sandrick might want him to stay up there, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> Absolutely. So 
beautiful day here. Of course, the early start here for this game. So two other games later in the day. Launceston versus Clarence at Windsor Park. And at KG5, it's Glenorchy against Lauderdale. So big day of TSL footy. Meadows against Lee. Falls a bit short. Lee with a tap. Only falls as far as Isaac McCrimmon. Kick now inside 50 for North Hobart. Off hands. There's McCulloch, the skipper. Oh, Leif Heber fell over. Handball was going in his direction. Bales now. Sweeps towards Bennett. Leif Heber's in there. He gets dispossessed. It's underneath the general admission area here at Utah Stadium. Jack McCulloch, quick kick inside 50. Chaos point might go through. No, just off to the right. One behind. So first score to North Hobart. One behind. North Fonson can get the score. Kick comes out to Bennett. Kicks laterally now to Sam Simpson. Looks like his brother now with that number two on. That was Harry Elmer with the hand pass to Declan Chug. Over here to Poly Kubank against the boundary line. Kicks long inside 50. Few options here. One's Jackie Avent. The dangerous Leary. He's hovering. He's got it. He snaps. Brandon Leary kicks the first goal for North Launceston. All class, Brandon Leary. Just in every gets near the ball, Rob Soward, you just know something exciting is going to happen. He's kicked a wonderful goal. He does Brandon Leary things like, as yes. you say, Dave, he just reads it so well. He's such an instinctive footballer. But uh, you gave a shout-out before the game to young Oliver DePoli Kubank, yep. and his kick there inside 50 was absolutely fantastic because it was always going to be to the advantage of a Northern Bombers player, and in that case, Leary reaped the rewards. He got good distance on the kick. He was right in front of us here on the forward flank, and it went all the 45, 50 metres to that dangerous spot, as you said, Rob. Yeah, Leary. Don't forget the goal kickers, Rob. It's your, your oh, job oh, there no, today. Better not slip up on Can't that. Don't slip up um, on those. No, have a few of them today, I think. Oh, I reckon Hopefully. there will be. Back in the middle, Lee. Wins his own tap. Kick semi-smothered. Player might have been tackled high. Play on. Comes out Adam McGuinness. Leans back. Finds Leif Heber. Boy from the northwest coast originally. He kicks off line. And taken easy back there by Lockie Mitchell. He plays on straight away to Bales. Bales the 45. Kicks a good one to Stingle. He settles things down as Michael Stingle. Back at the club this year from South Australia. Centering kicks a beauty to Lee. He's got a runner in Bales. Takes the handball, runs his full measure. Chip kicked half forward. And he swamped there is Jack Avent. At the fall is Leary. Handball's over the top looking for Chug. Doesn't get there. McLeod's in there for North Hobart. Now Chug takes it away. And he caught one over the shoulder. So Declan Chug, who's moved up from defence this year, Rob, into attack. Plays on immediately. Low kicks. A good one to Griffiths, who takes the mark. Harvey Griffiths, 11 goals this season in just two games. Yeah, he was terrific in round one and uh, just a big, powerful player. So uh, he's already proving a handful for uh, a taller opponent, but someone that's a bit lighter by the looks of things from here. Right behind this one, those viewing the stream are also those lovely blue boots of Harvey Griffiths. Big improvement in the TSL last year. Griffiths for goal number two. It's always near side. Just sneaks in for a behind. 1-1-7 North Launceston. North Hobart one behind, five minutes in. What are you seeing, Rob, early? Oh, bombers are just looking, you know, a class above at the moment. North Hobart have got to capitalise on those forward entries. Nice ball over the back there by uh, Geordie Payne, making his debut for North Launceston. Over age in the Devils this year. Let's move from defence to attack this year. One thing you mentioned, Dave, too, and I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb here, given how well... Uh, Lauderdale recruited. Stingle, for me, is one of the biggest recruits in the league this year. Absolute class player. He's just taken that spot of Ben Simpson, hasn't he? That, that niche that was left there uh, when Ben departed. Out out of Cox Goodger. First involvement. Kick spearing up here towards Chug. He takes it well on the bounce. Back to Sam Simpson. Chip kick finds a vent. Possibly right on the edge of his ability to score here. Norton on the mark. Thinks about playing on. He might steady down now for a shot. Wilbur McMurray is on for his first run in TSL footy. Exciting moment for him. Absolutely. So Jack Avent, I said he's on the edge of his range. He's going to prove me wrong, I've got a feeling. <laughs> he's going to cross the 50 now, where the digits usually are. Host to the man of the mark, sets it up high. He's going to fall short. Aganis is there, Griffiths is there at the fall. Oh, that uh, North Hobart player just dwelt a little bit long there, but he's not penalised. Tackled in the goal square. See who that is as he gets up. Charlie Hasty, I think it was. Boy from Guildford Young College. Meadows with the tap. 
Straight to Salisbury. He couldn't get a kick away now. Leary again. And by the top, Van Dam. Handball's back. A vent swings towards goal. Flyers wanted. Plenty of North Hobart defenders there. They thump it away. And his first charge. He tackled well by McGuinness. Does somehow get a kick away. Dipoli Kubank gets out of trouble. He's dispossessed. McLeod, his fellow devil there, has taken in a tackle. And Harrison McLeod did a good job there just to bottle it up. Pretty desperate stuff inside North Launceston's attacking 50. Ball goes up. Meadows does well. Out it comes to Norton. Kick smothered. They just pump it out of defence to North Hobart. Out here in the direction of Connor Downham. Out of Jack McCulloch. Good handball there from McCrimmon. Put his teammate under a bit of pressure though. And tackled to a standstill there is Nathan James. Bombers' pressure has been fantastic, hasn't it? Uh, just to keep that ball inside 50, even though they've been outnumbered on several occasions. Lee with the tap, beautifully done. The Stingle, left foot pass is a beauty to Aganis at his bootlace. Couldn't quite take it. Pumped out of defence there by, uh, that was Ryan Edmondson. Good clearing kick. Now to Cleaver. Gets a kick under pressure to Space. Leading out there is Cohen Stevenson. It eludes him. Now Lee Feber takes on the tackle from his fellow number seven in Bennett. Umpire says we'll ball it up. Umpires today, Tom McAdee, Nick Merritt-Smith and Riley Stevenson in charge of this contest. This is where they've broken down a bit, North Hobart, when they've got forward. So they've got to get better at getting that ball inside 50. Oh, Lee just takes it out of the contest, Rob, as easy as you like. Bales now, that left foot, getting a lot of it early. Over the head of Tapoli Kubank. And ball there from David Monks was out of bounds. They just look so much better drilled, the Bombers, early, Dave, don't they? Just their structures and their systems and their belief in each other. Uh, certainly early doors, but uh, they're looking very settled so far. D-League score earlier, North Hobart 10 6 Defeated North Lancers in 5-11-41. It was a pretty tight contest for three quarters. North Hobart just getting away at the end of that game. Pretty messy stuff over there as uh, Bales now gets the handball away towards McMurray. Taken though by Van Dam. Ambles back nicely. Tap on from Cox Goodyear to Bales to lead back to Bales with a left foot. Fashions a pass, does pretty well. Here they go now, North Launceston. Mark taken there. Icy by Bo Nash. Off they go. Here's Sam Simpson. He's got support from Nicholas. Sam Simpson gets to 50. Short pass. Well done by the defence there of Edmondson. He knocks it out of play. Maybe Sam Simpson could have pulled the trigger there, Rob. He, he probably got into distance. Just thinking the same thing. He was unselfish. He probably could have uh, straightened up and uh, had a ping there because uh, his decision at the end wasn't the best one. North Launceston 7, North Hobart 1. This is the City Park Radio 103.7, 96.5. Simulcast with the TSL YouTube live stream. Norton over the top. They're out of trouble through McLeod up the wing. Bennett there, fumbles slightly. Amble comes out from Elmer back to Bennett. And he's out of bounds. So pretty high energy contest so far. North Hobart just weathered the early storm, you'd think, Rob. Just at the moment, anyway. Yeah, they have. They've certainly resisted that pressure, but just being able to do that for the whole game is going to be the challenge, isn't it? We'll get some Dave Gruber stats at the next stoppage. Inside 50 from McCrimmon. Come down, take the mark there nicely. That's Meadows, the Ruckman, resting up forward. He's kicked semi-smothered. Chance here. Stevens has got it. Couldn't take it with him. Still a chance there for Wright for North Hobart, but out it comes. Good chain of handballs there. Ives involved. Now Sulzberger. Handballs to Stingle. Waits for Sulzberger to get to him, and he gets another handball away. Good link up here now to Pitt. Gets it on the bounds. He's tackled from behind by McGuinness. Great tackle, Tyler McGuinness. It's a fantastic tackle, and... Uh... McGuinness is going to be so important to them today, Dave, if they're going to cause the upset. And that's a great run-down tackle when the Bombers were out. Unfortunately for Pitt, the handball was just a bit off, wasn't it? It was. And uh, just gave McGuinness a chance to collar him. Back now to Hasty in defence. Wider here now to Dave Monks. Come over from the Hobart Footy Club last year. Monks goes wide. One-on-one -on -one contest there. RJ Watson in attendance. Gets it back again to RJ. Chain of handballs from right. Inside 50 now, North Hobart. Little pass comes into Cleaver, who takes the mark. Much better there from North Hobart, Dave. I talked before about 
been a bit scratchy on those inside 50 entries, but that was a beautiful strike of the ball there to uh, yeah, no, his I, teammate. I was a bit uh, just trying to find the player who gave the kick away. It was Cohen Stevenson. He lowered the eyes at the crucial moment. And a beautiful left foot pass finds Josh Cleaver. Right in front, 25 out, should convert for North Hobart. Cleaver has kicked the first goal here for the Demons. And they level things up at the 11 minute mark. 117, a piece here. Yeah, really nice goal. Probably the best bit of play from North Hobart today, Dave. They've shown they can win the ball out of the middle. But as I said, they've broken down sometimes with that forward delivery. But not in that case. So that will give, uh, give them plenty to think about in terms of how they attack this very, very solid Bombers defence. But uh, that, that pass was hit so perfectly, there was nothing he could do. And uh, Cleaver marked and Julie converted. Early stats from Dave Gruber. Well, hit out North Launceston on top there with eight to North Hobart's three. Clearance is pretty even. Um, the Demons have six and North Launceston five. Inside 50 is five to North Launceston and four for North Hobart. OK, so it's level on the scoreboard and Dave Gruber's stats suggest it's pretty level around the ground. I like the involvement there, RJ Watson on that far wing. Good night for him today. Lee wins the tap towards Sulzberger. Can't take it with him. Back up though by Stingle. Evades a tackle. Back to Sulzberger. Kicks in a hurry, up forward. Just nearly a mark back there. It is. That's McGuinness again. He's playing that sweeper across half back, as well as uh, spending some time on the ball. Key player for North Hobart, as Rob said. Chips it to another pretty important player, and that's Norton. Angus Norton, brother of Baxter, of course. Clarence. Kilpatrick back in the side today. He's kick up the wing. Looking there for Nathan Jones. He couldn't take it. To attacking 50, McCulloch leads out and takes the mark. Big Jack, wheels and goes, kicks to the square. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Meadows is back there and a mark in front. Not paid. Hmm. Gee, that was close. I think that was Stevenson once again. Let's get a visual there. In fact, it was uh, Matthew Yates back there flying for that mark. Gee, he nearly took it. It's in the goal square. Chance for North Hobart, but uh, the tap's done well there towards Stingle. Has to retreat a bit. And left foot kick is an absolute beauty to Dom Pitt. Lace out on the chest. Railway wing. Waits for support. Polly Kubank with a little kick. Now falls to Oscar Van Dam. Handball's over the top. Gee, that's a lovely handball to Cox Goodger. He's got support now from Bennett. who's come up from half back. Bennett kicks inside. 50 to Leary. Extended those arms. Judged it beautifully in amongst traffic. Just cleared the head there of Harrison McLeod and Leary, 40 metres out, slight angle as a chance for his second. Great link up play again by the Bombers. It was, and when they get out and can do that on this big ground, Dave, how, how good is it to watch? Uh, beautiful play there through lots of hands. Bennett, absolute laser pass there to Leary, who will be lining up for his second. Kick to the town end, kick the first for North Launceston. He's missed this time though. To the right, he'd be disappointed with that. It's probably the only knock on him, isn't it? He's one of these guys that makes the impossible look possible, but misses those Sometimes ones, doesn't misses he? Those, yeah. those set shots, yep. And back in front, Northern Bombers, 128 to 117. Guinness kicks long, spots up Norton. Gus Norton tries to get round Leary, or only just Kilpatrick under pressure. Back to McLeod, has support from Downham. Downham kicks here towards half forward. Stevenson from behind, can't take it. Falls to Stingle, reading it well as in Meadows. Has he got an outlet? He has. Cohen Stevenson might have been tackled without it. He lays a tackle on Nicholas. Now to Bennett. Now to Mitchell. They're working it out here from half back. Sweeping handball to Elmer. Over the top to Van Dam. This is where they launch their attacks from the Bombers. Van Dam gets a handle, has support. Handball over the top from Nash. To Elmer, to Pitt, bounces the ball once, gets around his opponent, kicks inside 50 at the bootlaces there of Jack Ahern. He couldn't pick it up. Cleared now to Yates for North Hobart, who marks it half back. I'll take a breath, Rob. I'll take a breath. Yates loads up. Looks for a team out here on the wing just in front of us. Bombers have got the numbers. Let's well, come to Sandrick. Little chip forward there. I think it's Stevenson, Rob. I can, you're behind the thing I'll, there. I'll, we'll we'll no. say it's Stevenson. He's chipped in board. And a mark, mark taken there by McCulloch. McCulloch now. Two kicks out from goal. 
He's had a lively start, spearing past the leaf heather, but G getting in the way and reading it well for North Launceston there was Geordie Payne. I like these youngsters, Rob, they really play with a lot of dare and dash. As now it's uh, Van Dam who takes the bounce. Goes wider here, looking for Griffiths, clears him, chugs, tackled well, but he not tackled well according to the umpire. Free kick, Declan Chuck. Couple of kicks out from goal. Left half forward. Going to kick along inside 50. Big Aganis is there. Clears him. Griffiths, the opportunist, picks up and goals. Harvey Griffiths, that's his bread and butter. He gets a lot of those types of goals, Rob. We saw it in round one against Launceston. He just hovered around the back of the contest and uh, really gold unopposed in the end. Yeah, he did. The ball sat beautifully for him. But just something I noticed, Dave, again, going yep. back to something really early on, I talked about the fact that Van Dam was running with Sandrick. Uh, we haven't seen Sandrick. He hasn't been in the frame. And Van Dam's That's the first so time busy we called him when you called him a moment ago. Yep. Yeah, so busy across half back. So those young running players from the Bombers, once they get out and go, it's, it's job on, isn't it? They're, they're beautiful to watch, and the ball spreads, and it's uh, danger, danger signs for North Hobart. Just the link up by handball from yep. half back is just really impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it is. They just run and work so hard for each other. So their fitness levels are obviously, uh, you know, really, really high order, and uh, they look dangerous. Lee in the ruck now there with Nathan James. Comes to Sandrick. The guy he mentioned might just have to lift a little bit. McCulloch scoops it in front of him. Taken there by Nash, back to Bales. Now to Van Dam. Gee, he's had a fair bit of the, the ball. Having a great season. Nicholas now to Avent. Is that link-up handball from half-back? Avent gets around Leaf Heber. Back to Van Dam now to the dangerous Cox Goodger. He was ridden a little bit there. What are you noticing, Rob? Well, I'm just noticing Van Dam's had two play, uh, involvements in that position to play. Sandrick's jogging along 30 metres behind him. So he's got to be tighter. He looks like he's limping, though, Sandrick. So not sure what's going on there. In the front of the contest... North Hobart mop it up and sweep it away there through McGuinness. That's a lovely delivery to McCulloch. Met there by Lee illegally. Free kick Jack McCulloch. The Demon Skipper. We'll launch another attack here for North Hobart. They're well and truly in this contest. McGuinness has had a heap of possessions already. And here's the debutant McMurray with his first touch in TSL footy. Hands it back to McGuinness. Kick inside 50. Oh, that's well read there by Elmer for North Launceston. Gets a kick away to Leary, who's drifted up from the forward line. Kicks it a little bit blindly towards half forward. It's a one on two here. Nice one, rock over from Hasty. There for North Hobart is Monks. Spills down to McLeod. McMurray, confidence from the young man. Kicks to half forward, but kicks a bit blindly. And straight down the throat of Harry Bales. I reckon he's had 10 positions this first quarter, Rob. As he gets it now to uh, Don Pitt. Left foot kick straight away. It's terrific to Aganis. Great vision, Dom Pitt. Yeah, he's had a really, really good start. But as you've called, Dave, those young running players from the Bombers are just cutting the Demons to pieces at the moment and uh, just looking for work, just simply running and working harder than their opponent. Yeah, Harry Bales, she, uh, you know, we haven't got the stats today, but he has just got lots of possessions already. He's a big kick for young Tony Aganis, who's come across from Longford this year. He's only 20 out directly in front. Town end of the ground. Lays back and kicks a goal for North Launceston. Tony Aganis. It's a good goal there for North Launceston. Another team goal. Once again, launched from the half-back line. Yeah, I'm not seeing, again, uh, Adam Bester, absolutely quality coach and very successful in his own career. He's got to look really, really hard at this and come up with something to stop that slingshot that the Bombers are doing. Because at the moment, as you've called, Dave, th th we're hearing the same names all the time gathering possession after possession after possession, you've got to do something to stop that. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. Special guest at halftime today, Executive Director of the Tasmania Devils, Kath McCann, is going to join us. So uh, we'll talk about all the developments in the Tasmania Devils footy club going forward. Should be a good interview. Stay with us at halftime. Here's McEntee. The umpire, that is, who uh, slams the ball on the ground. Aganis wins. Only his father was right, but he coughs it up now to Tapoli Kubank. Back to Sulzberg. You're not a great kick. Thumped here. Taken by Nash, who's met straight away. There'll be a ball up 60 metres out from North Launceston's goal. They lead 3 2 20. North Hobart 1 1 7. 21 minutes gone. 
Get down to Chris Sayer at the next stoppage. Got a little bit of news from the boundary line. Sam Wright kicks off the ground. Up to the wing. Taken by Fletcher Bennett. Gets around his opponent easily. Delivers to Bo Nash. I reckon that's on Sam, about Sandrick. I'd say is my prediction. I think it might be a dollar one on that one, Rob. <laughs> Here we go now with Bales. Kicks backwards, looking for Nicholas. Now he's got Bennett right next to him there for the 20-metre kick inside the centre square. He goes there now. Nice kick to Sulzberger. They're building again. Sweeping kick over here is a great one. Taken here by Geordie Payne. Geordie Payne for goal. Near side. One behind. 3 3 21, the Bombers. 1 1 7, North Hobart. What do you got for us, Chris? Yes, yeah, yeah, Sandrick has come off. Uh, probably just for rest. Uh, and he didn't put the headphones on to talk to the coach. So he has come off. He probably won't be long. He'll be back on. Thanks, Chris. Still warm conditions down there? Beautiful day. Yes, it is quite warm. The full back. Long kick up the wing. Front position there was Nathan James. Fights for the ball there with Geordie Payne. Ball says the crowd. Could go either way. Payne again. Laying on top of it. Ball going nowhere. Ball up. I reckon something uh, Bester will talk about at quarter time, Dave, is two-way running from his, uh, from his mids. Because at the moment... I'm only seeing those demon jumpers running one way. They've really got to be accountable when the Bombers go forward. Dom Pitt inside 50. Knocked away by Nash. North Hobart player tackled there. Nash again to Polly Kubank. Great vision to Sam Simpson. who should kick a goal for North Launceston and does. Oh, to Polly Kubank there. Just heard the call. Had the sense that he had a teammate there to his uh, lateral side on the left. And Sam Simpson there with a calm finish. You raised him as a real uh, one to look at, Dave Young, Kupoli Kubank, uh, and he certainly had a really good start. But Sam Simpson had all day there, got himself to the right spot, and uh, you know the easiest of goals. No pressure uh, applied to him at all. So uh, danger signs, as we've said, for uh, North Hobart, and I'm sure quarter time won't come soon enough for them to address that, yeah. Dave. The 15 minute mark was a really even contest on the scoreboard and in general play. We heard groups of stats. Groups, so just quickly inside 50s now, please. Uh, up to 13 for North Launceston. Uh, North Hobart sitting on 7. So that was about 5 all just not long yeah, ago, was it? Yeah. yeah. So uh, they've really taken control. Aganis now in the ruck. Lee having a spell. He wins it down here towards Stingle, but uh, Kilpatrick sharks it. Taking it there for North Hobart was Isaac McCrimmon. His handball wasn't effective. And the ball up McCrimmon. It was a big name uh, in Northern Tasmanian football. It was. Uh, yeah. I've, I'm not sure if he's uh, John McCrimmon's son, but I certainly okay. know he's a relative. Someone text Rob if we know the answer to that one. Aganis inside 50. Punched away by Lee, who's resting up forward. Charlie Hasty does well. Calm play. Leans back in a kick looking for Leaf Heber. Getting in the way is that man Bales. He thumps it into the grandstand. Well, Ross McCrimmon, who's John's father, I think the best and fairest is named after him at yep. Launceston. Uh, life members, premiership players. So uh, I'm sure someone will let us know about that one. Absolutely. 27 plays 7. 24 minutes gone. It's retrieving the ball from over the boundary line there. Been a pretty fast start to this game. And a warm day. We're playing a 1 o'clock start, so these guys are going to be pretty cooked come... Uh, Quarter number four, Rob. They will, and I think that's going to be the challenge for North Hobart too. The Bombers obviously used to this very big ground, so we'll see how things hold up on the warm day. Gee, great tap from Aganis to Salisbury. Gets to 48. Terrific smother there by Downham, but a little kick from Nash. Can't find a teammate, and getting back there is McGuinness. He's been busy too, hasn't he, back there? A lot of possessions. Tyler McGuinness. They can throw him around the ground in lots of different positions. Kick's not great on this occasion. Just bounced inside the boundary line. Callan Kilpatrick, uh, he's back at the, the Demons this year. We've seen him play some pretty good games over the years. Very quick player. Can take a good grab. Yeah, they've got a couple of, uh, you've mentioned them, I think, there, Dave, a couple of inclusions, which is good to build on that developing side that, uh, that did so well uh, last year. Meadows with the tap. Now there's a ruck infringement free kick over the shoulder. It's coming back to Tony Aganis. And North Launceston, they, they look much better when they've got that second ruck option like Tony Aganis to give Lee a spell who's just sitting in the goal square. What a bonus that is. Oh, it's a massive bonus. I mean, he's been basically a bit of a one-man show, hasn't he, Lee, for the past yep. few seasons? Bales inside 50 to Jackie Avin. Now, he had a shot for goal, perhaps a bit further out than this early in the quarter. Didn't make the distance. And another player who seems to be playing a bit up forward. 
Uh, the veteran now for North Launceston. We know he can do some great work in the middle, but they've got now other options, so they have the luxury of putting Jack Avent in the forward line. Avent now for goal. He's going to miss to the near side. Yeah, it's a great, uh, a great thing to have up your sleeve, isn't it? Someone yep. was skillful and as smart and uh, a proficient as Jack Avent uh, playing forward for you. 4-4-28. Four, 1-1-7. Four, 26 and a half minutes gone. McGuinness cruises out of the square once again. Finds Harrison McLeod in the back pocket. Taking his time. Another game over at Invermay Park today. Old Launcestonians versus the Uni Lions. So you might hear a siren faintly in the background from time to time. McGuinness again. He's drifted up. Has support there from McCrimmon. Isaac McCrimmon kicks to half forward. Yates with the spoil. Did well to get it out of play. They certainly, uh, you know, when they link up North Hobart, they certainly look very proficient. Like, I really like their younger players. They're a developing side. And, uh, you know, that's how you learn and develop, isn't it, Dave? Playing against a side that, uh, that's that been a powerhouse for a number of years. So uh, I'm sure Adam Best will find plenty of positives at half t- at uh, quarter time, which will be upon us fairly shortly. Got a feeling the Bombers have really got on top in the clearances too, Groobs. Have you got a, a figure for us there? Yeah, 12 to, to 8. Yep. Yeah. So that was pretty easy. That, that was like, pretty even. That was 6 to 5 there at one stage in front, the Dean. So yes. McGannis flips it over the back. Contested footy. And a free kick out of this one. It's going away at North Fonceston. And Michael Stingle. Get it probably for a high contact, I suspect. Stinger is the call. Goes to half forward, the lead from Chug. Nice chop off defensive spoil by Edmondson. But, uh, Chug's got the ball. Declan Chug, 70 metres out to the hot spot. Lee's there, the big fella gets the front position, takes the strong mark. Just too big, too strong there for the North Hobart defence. And uh, once he got that front position, Rob, it was game over. Yeah, it was, and he's used all of his experience. I mean, he's a state-level player, Alex Lee. Kicking right on the side. Now, I know he'll really value this. He doesn't kick a lot of goals. Takes no time at all, does Alex Lee, to kick a goal. A great finish to a great quarter from North Launceston. 5-4, 34, leading North Hobart, 1-1-7. And after an arm wrestle for about 14, 15 minutes, uh, North Launceston really took control of the contest. Kicking to the town end, and they lead by 27 points. Rob Soward, goal uh, kickers, and some did. comments. Yeah, look, uh, all singles for uh, North Launceston. Singles to Sam Simpson, Brandon Leary, Harvey Griffiths, Alex Lee, and Tony Aganis. And for North Hobart, the single there to Josh Cleaver. So I think the big thing that would be the way for North Hobart at quarter time is just how to stem that Bombers running game. Because when they uh, rebound the ball, it's just it's beautiful to watch. It's just pure run, run, effort, run. And then, obviously, uh, they've got some guys that are forward that can kick goals. And uh, we're seeing some size mid matches there, as we saw with that Alex Lee mark and goal. Um, for, for North Launceston, I think uh, uh, Adrian Smith would be really, really pleased with how they've started and how they're working. Their work rate is terrific. And uh, um, as far as what they can do, I, I guess just more of the same, Dave. They, they look really, really good when they get the ball out and run and link up by hand. Yeah. You know, two things. North Launceston midfield dominance. Took a while to establish that and run from half-back. Yeah. They're just so fit. I mean, you can tell they've had uh, you know, a big pre-season once again. And they'll run this game, there's no doubt. And uh, North Hobart are going to have to find some answers in the second quarter. Team stats, Dave Groove at a quarter time. Yeah, the North Launceston Rucks getting on top now. 16 hit-outs uh, that quarter to North Hobart's five. Um, clearances, North Launceston 12. Uh, skipped ahead there a little bit of North Hobart, who finished the quarter with eight. Inside 50s. 17 for North Launceston, 7 for North Hobart. Marks inside 50, 6 for North Launceston, 2 for the Demons, and intercept marks. North Launceston, 4, North Hobart, 2, and free kicks, uh, 4 for North Launceston, and 2 for North Hobart. Just the 6 free kicks in that first quarter, so the umpire letting the ball go. It's been a really good quality game. Ball pinging from back line to forward line in uh, pretty good time, so... Let's hope we get a good game here for the remainder of today. We've got fantastic weather here in Launceston. It's over 20 degrees, and York Park is an absolute pitcher. All right, so we'll take a break here at quarter time. At quarter time, it's North Launceston 5 4 leading North Hobart 1 1 7. Back in a moment. 
Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. Whether you're moving in or you're settled in, make the switch online today. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Don't lose out. Visit the website, choose your new deal and sign up today. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. Elgas, local, safe and reliable. A sponsor of City Park Radio. Community Care Tasmania is your local not-for-profit home care service provider in Tasmania. We deliver a full range of home care services with care and empathy. Our friendly, professional and innovative staff will tailor care to your needs. Ring 6334 or 1300 722 400 and speak to a local or visit cct.org.au to find out more. At Community Care Tasmania, we put your care first. A sponsor of City Park Radio. You're listening to Tasmanian State League Football on City Park Radio. Dave Moore, Rob Sauer, Dave Gruber on stats, Chris Sayer, who's uh, down there. I think he might be with. Where'd I spot Chris? I think, yeah, I'm not sure. Would. Huddle, he's, he's with North. He's with North, yeah. He's North over there. North Launceston, that's right, yeah. <laughs> going to say that today. Yeah, so uh, that's the team here today. We're giving you the, uh, all the best for, of TSL footy. And at quarter time, it's Northern Bombers 27 points up. And this is a big quarter for North Hobart, isn't it, Rob? Um, you could see this game really getting out of their control pretty quickly unless they make an, a bit of a statement in this first five to ten minutes. Yeah, they've just got to cut that. We, we keep talking about it, but, but it's the, the critical thing, Dave. The midfield dominance, the runoff half-back, just got to be accountable. And what I'm seeing at the moment, certainly no slight on, on, on the team, but there's more you know, guys wanting to push forward rather than, than the two-way running, and that's going to kill you because the, the Northern Bombers have got guys, you know, you just go through them, Fletcher Bennett, Oscar Van Dam, Michael Stingle, uh, we've called all them, Lockie Mitchell, uh, as we just we go through the list, De- Declan Chugg's obviously gone for Blade Salisberger. I mean, you've got these guys that just run and run and run. You've got to be accountable for them, because they are so dangerous and give their forwards uh, first opportunity. Now, foot uh, time again is obviously, I'd say, he's the top possession winner, probably on the ground, <laughs> for North Hobart, he's, he's had a lot of it. Um, but just around those contests now, uh, some of their on balls really need to get their hand on the footy pretty quickly. They look reasonably dangerous up forward. We saw them have some good quality forward entries. Yeah. Uh, we know they've got Jack McCulloch up there who can take a mark. Cohen Stevenson, who's very dangerous. Um, so if they can get some supply up there, they can actually score pretty well. Adam Best is pretty animated down there at the moment. He's pointing to the, the board that's being held up. Yeah. Looks like they've broken away from the North Launceston huddle. I reckon Adam's listening to us because uh, he'd be just telling him, oh, I'm seeing him signal. I reckon he's saying, two-way running, boys. He's, uh, it certainly was a hallmark of size that he played in. He played in that uh, golden era at the Bernie, uh, Bernie uh, Dockers, Dave, as you'd remember. Yes, absolutely. Good and, uh, you know, that's the hallmark of him. Chris has got something for us. Yeah, probably, I think he's been to both huddles. He's versatile today. What do you got for us, Chris? Swiss Army knife. It took quite a while for North Hobart to get together. Um, uh, North, um, North coach... Uh, wants them to uh, continue down the corridor, you know, stick to the corridor. Uh, and best for North Hobart, so we've got to stop their inside 50s. Uh, inside 50s was 18 to 8, is that right, group? Yep, something like that, group. Um, so really yep. got to stop their inside 50s and a uh, few little positional changes as well, but they're not panicking yet. Okay, that's good. It's uh, what you don't want coaches to do, do you, in these day and age, the, the days of ranting... I'm pretty much over. You save that for extreme situations, Rob. It's all about uh, what's coming up next, isn't it? Yeah, certainly not the uh, Ronald Dale Barassi <laughs> style uh, foz that used to be in vogue. And, uh, you know, football's changed, of course. But yep. both uh, very highly credentialed coaches. Best that we've talked about. Adrian Smith, uh, a long-term assistant at North, uh, North Launceston, now in the top job. So uh, he'd uh, be very happy with how his charges have started today. So Alex Lee back in the ruck. Tony Aganis is resting up forward. Matched up there by Ryan Edmondson. Griffiths in the forward pocket. To go in the first quarter. So underway. North Launceston to the northern end of the ground this quarter. And North Hobart to the city end as we get a repeat bounce. Or a throw up now from umpire Tom McEntee. The best umpires in Tasmania. Lee wins a tap to himself. 
Skirting around here is Stingle over the top to Sulzberger. His handball didn't find the mark in Cox Goodger. Goes to McCrimmon. Shrugging the tackle is Kilpatrick. Has to kick straight away. Can't find a teammate. Is Simpson. Sam Simpson. Finds to Poly Kubank from 50 to the goal square again. Oh, but that's a lovely mark. I think that's Declan Chug cruising around the back of the contest. Put the hands up and took a beautifully contested mark inside the goal square. So this is what North Hobart didn't want. An early goal. He's going to taste, waste no time here. Declan Chug kicks a goal for North Launceston to start off the second quarter. Extend the lead. 6 4 40 to one one seven. The other worry, I guess, if you're North Hobart is you've got six individual goal scorers for North Launceston. So it's not yep. like, you know, you've got Harvey Griffiths or... Uh, you know, uh, uh, Breen and Leary getting hold of you. There's just that even spread of goals. But just, again, a terrific passage of play there from broken play. McCrimmon did really, really well to intercept that ball, sort of just threw it on the boot, came back to the Bombers, and they set up beautifully. Yep. Again, Dipoli Kubank, Dave, was front and centre in that uh, yep. setup of that play with that beautiful pass. It's another assist for uh, young Dipoli Kubank. It was. A Brian Myers type effort. <laughs> it certainly was. <laughs> great, great start to his career. All right. Another bounce from McAtee. Unopposed there was Nathan Jaynes in the ruck now, but it comes away to North Thompson to Sulzberger. Inside 50. Chug again. Knocked away from him. Griffiths, right foot snap. Off balance. And it skews away to the right. One behind. 6 5 41 North Thompson. North Hobart 1 1 7. Rob. It, uh, look, uh, whilst it didn't result in a goal, Griffiths is work rate right there to get front and centre. I mean, a big, strong body. Just shows you how hard these Bombers players are working. McLeod kicking out from fullback on this occasion, looking for McCulloch. Thumped away from the back of the contest by Payne, but there's a whistle on play in the marking contest. It's going to come back to North Launceston in that little patch that we can't see, free, Groups. Free Give me a number. He's still getting the ball. Okay. Give me a number when you see him. Group is the only one that can see that little area of the ground. So the Bermuda Triangle here of Utah here Stadium. Is. Number six is Mitchell. Mitchell. So Mitchell to the goal square. McGannis can't mark. Chug again. Snaps. Nowhere near the goal on this occasion. Doing well as McGinnis. Handballs over there towards Norton. Spins out. Desperation kick comes off and finds Sandrick at half back. Sandrick here goes wide. Over there looking for Downham. Can't win the contest. Handball comes to the top now to Elmer. To Griffiths on the boundary line. Has a shorter option. Chug can't quite take it. Tries to spin out. In fact, it's Jack Avent. We may have got a high tackle, Rob. I got that one right? Yeah, I think you have. Uh, but again, you know, never, ever... No, out should... of bounds, sorry. Oh, gee, I was going to say, yep. I thought he never, sh never should have got that. He had two big bodies around him, but just working hard and unlucky perhaps not to get that free kick. It's binoculars time. It's a long way away from us here on level four of Utah Stadium. McGinnis tackled from behind. Can't escape the clutches there. Bradley Cox, good chat. Been fairly quiet. He's had some good involvements, though. Jaynes wins the tap. Shrugging the tackle there with Sandrick. Tries to win it out of defence here for North Hobart. But uh, they're not letting it out. The North Launceston forwards. Keeping it in, keeping it in, waiting for an opportunity. We were talking about luxury of uh, having uh, Agonis giving uh, Lee a chop out. Well, you've got Brad Cox good just starting on a wing. So yes. <laughs> uh, all his experience and skill. Uh, great asset there to the Bombers. Nathan Jaynes gets it out of defence of 50. I tackle there is Cleaver by Geordie Payne. Cleaver, I think, was the goal kicker for North Hobart, Rob? He Correct? was, yes. yes. In that first quarter. Converting from 20 out in front. Oh, here's Cox Goodge now with a bit of space. That's dangerous. Inside 50. Gee, big fly from Edmondson, but offering over the back again. Is that man Declan Chug? He's read it beautifully a second time. It's almost as if he's just uh, been the backup uh, marking option there for Tony Aganis and both times he's read it beautifully. So Declan Chug for his second for the quarter, 20 metres out, slight angle. That one's off to the right. What a great shot on goal. He's disappointed with that one. Let off there for North Hobart. 6 6 42 the Bombers. North Hobart 1 1 7. Five inside 50s already for North Launceston in this quarter. Well, you read my mind. Ruse is going to ask you about that. Yes, uh, pretty stark statistic, that one. Nice kick on that occasion by Zach Barrow. 
Finds his teammate in James. James goes to half forward to Leaf here, but here's a chance for North Hobart now through Sandrick. He's got a one on one in the square here. Nicholas and McCulloch. McCulloch might get there first. Bad bounce for McCulloch. Nicholas did well. Saw it out of play. A little bit of a size mismatch, mismatch there, Rob. Uh, Mitch Nicholas and Jack McCulloch. Yeah, that kick just had to be a fraction better going in because they did have the mismatch, but uh, great passage of play there from uh, North Hobart. They, they got out and got on their bike. I'd like to see Leif Heber get more involved. He's a very clever player, Leif Heber, and uh, obviously dangerous around goals. So a little bit more from him, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure he'll bring something to the North Hobart side today. Lee with a tap, Sandrick with a snap for goal, Jack Sandrick. Well done, Mitch Nicholas. Hit to the front of the contest to Bennett. Over the top here to Bales, has to kick straight away and coughs it up to Jack Sandrick. And probably within range, he thought about passing it off. Man on the mark is about 46 metres out. Nice little passage here for the Demons. They're, uh, they're working really hard, Dave, to keep it inside 50, and they've had two or three repeat entries there. So hopefully a reward for effort here for Jack Sandrick. Yeah, given North Launceston's dominance in the first part of this quarter, if they could even the ledger here with a goal apiece, it'd be a bit of a win for them. Jack Sandrick crosses the 50, sets it up in front of goal. Has it got the distance? It hasn't. Thumped through by Fletcher Bennett. One behind. 1 2 8 North Hobart. Northern Bombers 6 6 42. Mitch Nicholas goes short, finds Van Dam. One of the best for North Fonses in that first quarter. Short now to Bennett. Bennett's got the footy at half back. Telegraphs the handball there to Nicholas. Dangerous left foot of Nicholas. It's not dangerous on this occasion as he gets it straight to Leif Hebert. Thomas Leif Hebert goes wide to Yates. Premiership player in the D League last year. Kicks inside 50. Thump from behind. Now the clutches of James to Cox Goodger. Hamble's not great. Norton's there. Might have been tackled without it. Stingle now. Thrown to the ground. Ball up. Yeah, they've certainly lifted the Demons, which is, which is terrific because, as, uh, as Groobes um, said, the, the, the dominance of the Bombers was uh, getting scary, wasn't it? North Fonson runner, former cricket legend Richard Bennett. Out on the ground there. Former state player for Tasmania. Multiple premiership player for the Launceston Cricket Club, Dave. Scored 100 at the Gabba. It's now it's 20 metres out from goal. We've got a push in the back free kick. Coming to North Hobart. Let's wait to see who gets it as they get off the deck. Is it Cleaver once again? The goal kicker, number six, it is. Now Josh Cleaver. He's right in front again, a bit further out this time. Man in the mark, 40 out. He wouldn't have done a lot of running as an opening batsman, I don't reckon. It'd just be boundaries, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Might have chased some leather a few times. <laughs> uh, Tazzy's struggling years of first-class cricket. Here we go, Josh Cleaver for North Hobart second. Sets it out to the right. One goal, 3-9. North Hobart, North Launceston 6-6-42. A little patch here for the Demons. Griffiths finds Van Dam. Has support from Nicholas. Goes by hand. He's at left half back. Goes wider. And it's out of bounds on the full before Declan Chug could rein it in. So turnover here. I know it's not fashionable in footy these days, but I'm just wondering why they're not tagging some of these. Oh, Edmondson's kick <laughs> returns the favour. Oh. He kicks it out of bounds on the full as well. Why they're not tagging some of these Bombers half-back players yep. because uh, you've got to do something to, to stem the flow. They're very damaging. Geordie Payne, I think it is, back there. Gets himself in a bit of a pickle. And has to kick high to the wing. Front position was James. Cox Goodger gets the high tackle. He knows how to draw those ones, does Bradley. Right in front of the umpire. Takes his time. Kick to the centre of the ground. To Leary has to wait for it. Gee, takes a good mark, though, under pressure from McLeod. It's a good matchup. Left foot kick is a beauty to Mitchell. If you can take the mark, he got the recovery though. And balls now to Bales. You fumbles. That's his opponent in. Chance to clear here. Zach Barrow's got it. Weaves his way through. Recovering from injury last year. Zach Barrow back in the senior team. Gets it to James. Long to half 40 to McCulloch. Oh, the bounce is bad again for McCulloch. He can't get a good bounce at the moment. Nicholas did well. The Cox Goodja. Kicks it to the wing. Little fumble there from Avent. Opens the door 
from North Hobart, although Nicholas is going to sweep up here. And kicks it to his mate across half back in Bales. Bales short to Stingle is at 15. Just. Stingle now, a lot of options inside 50. Kick's not great. It's going to work out well. It's the chest of Ahern. Jack Ahern. They've just got so many options up there, they have Yes, that's right. I mean, you look up as a North Launceston midfielder and you've got a lot of players you can put in the direction of. So in Declan Chug pop up for a couple of marks this quarter. You've got Griffiths, Leary. Lots of options. So Jack Ahern, this will be for North Launceston second of this quarter on the left foot. Sets it up nicely. Kicks the goal for North Launceston to Jack Ahern. And once again, those damaging halfbacks, Mitch Nicholas, Harry Bales, uh, setting things up for North Launceston. Yeah, look, uh, we're not going to harp on the point, no. but you've got, they've got, you've just got to do something. I mean, really, they're, they're just, you know, leather poisoning for those halfback flankers, and they're working so hard. But I look at that forward line again there, and uh, you've got the resting Ruckman, obviously, you've got Ahern, you've got Griffiths, there's your big, big bodies, I mean, and then uh, Garnis, uh, obviously, interchanging with Lee. Just a real nightmare for the North Hobart defenders. And then you throw in a, a Brandon Leary and uh, look out. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. Lee wins the tap. Nice hit of Van Dam. Over to Stingle. Support from Sam Simpson. Good intercept of the handball there from North Hobart. That was uh, RJ Watson. Now Nort with a little kick to Lee Feber. To Kilpatrick. Inside 50 the Demons. Leading out. Taking a great mark. That's Connor Downham. Kicked four goals this season for North Hobart. Their leading goal kicker so far. And that's the best passage of play we've seen from the D's today. Yeah, they've shown some glimpses, Dave, in this quarter. Really like the way they link up. I mean, Jack McCulloch's been very dis uh, unlucky on a couple of occasions with the ball not sitting for him. But a really, really nice passage of play. Deserves a goal. They need this one, the Demons, desperately. Connor Downham. Kicks a nice goal for North Hobart. Brings them a little bit closer here at Utah Stadium. 2-3-15. They trail North Launceston 7-6-48. Two goals to one through 12 and a half minutes in this second quarter. They've certainly found a, a few more opportunities to link up and uh, look dangerous, which uh, I'm sure uh, their coach will be really, really pleased with. But uh, reward for effort there, as you say, Dave. Probably their best passage of play. And down them kicking a really, really nice goal. A little one percenter for the number 15 in front of us here, Rob. RJ Watson. He's got that hand in, got the turnover, and generated something the other way, which they haven't been able to do today very often. No, no. Um, and again, he's a, he's a lively-looking player, uh, Jay. So I'll uh, keep an eye on him for the rest of the game. Bounce down in the middle of Utah Stadium. Nice bounce by McEntee. The umpire. And get a secondary ball up. Group, just a couple of stats. How are the clearances looking? Clearances are even this quarter, four apiece. Um, inside 50s, North Hobart even that up a little bit there on four. North Launceston on six. Cleaver to RJ Watson. Kick semi smothered. Chance for Simpson. Links up with Van Dam. And turn to Stingle. Looking for Elmer with a handball. Intercepting though is Norton. And a ball up. Forward side of the centre square for North Launceston. We lead by 33 points. They led by 23 at quarter time. Comes down here towards Sulzberger. Hovers over the ball. A rugby scrum here. Another stoppage. They've just got this amazing ability, the Bombers, haven't they? Every year they just manage to reload. They lose a stack of players. And uh, the young players coming through step up and fill the breach, don't they? Absolutely. Able to regenerate really well. Some promising players in their D-League, as there was for North Hobart today. That was a fantastic contest. D's got home by 19 points. There wasn't much more than a goal in it for most of the game. No, a couple of late ones there to the Demons got them over the line by, I think, about 20, wasn't it? Yep. 19, 20? Salisberger inside 50 to Griffiths. He plays on. He gets through traffic, weaves around, kicks to the hot spot. Again, is there. Puts the arms up. Good score from behind by the North Hobart defence. McLeod takes a tackle. Gets the handball away towards Monks. Taking now is Nash for North Launceston. McLeod in there again. And he's tackled to a standstill. Ball up. So Demons defence under pressure here. 
Charlie Meadows. Well, again, it takes it out of the ruck. Could have launched on goal. Took too long to get rid of it. Penalised. Play on advantage through McLeod now to right. Right with the long sleeves. Gets it to the wing to Lee Pepper. He's got a man on here, McCulloch. He goes there now. Gee, the kick was just on the money near the boundary line. McCulloch now to half forward. Stevenson front position. Over the back, read by Nicholas. Nicholas to Van Dam. He's got runners wide. One of those is Sam Simpson who takes the mark. Overlap now with Fletcher Bennett. He'll have to get on the bounce. He won't. Kilpatrick did well. Scoops it over to RJ Watson this way, that away. Gets out of trouble. Just kicks the kick away in time, but it's a great kick to Cohen Stevenson. Boy from Devonport. Here they go. The little kick to Cleaver. He takes the mark. And the kick there was from Connor Downham. They're linking up pretty well there, the two goal scorers, aren't they? Yes. Downham and Cleaver. So Cleaver, another opportunity. I think their aim would be to try to be within four to five goals at half time. Just to give themselves that lifeline going into the second half. Kicking to the town end of Utah Stadium is Josh Cleaver. His kick's not bad. Snuck in, Josh Cleaver. That's two goals for him this afternoon. And the third for North Hobart. 3 3 21, 7 6 48. Two in a row to North Hobart. Yeah, they've lifted their rating a bit too. Um, you know, like uh, we talked about what they needed to do at, um, at quarter time. Uh, Bomb has had a goal, I think, within a minute. So it looked pretty ominous. The five inside 50s done nothing. But to their credit, Dave, they've lifted their rating. They're working harder. And, uh, and you know, they're getting themselves back into the game, which is, uh, which is terrific. So two goals each this quarter. And when they get the opportunities, when they get a little bit of space inside that forward line, uh, that's when they look dangerous. But that means they've got to get it down there quickly to get that space. That's right, and that's been the challenge. It's been chopped off across that uh, half-back line, and the Bombers have been away. Lee with the tap. Goes down a little bit injured there, Alex Lee. Not sure what happened there, but anyway, here comes Blade Sulzberger. Left foot inside 50. Gannis is shoved out of the way. Over the back, Charlie Hasty. They dive upon him. Hasty, the boy from Guildford Young College. Uh, big game against St. Pat's during the week. Saints got up by a goal at the St. Pat's Oval. Good quality contest. Charlie Meadows. It's a tap right. It's a funny old kick outside defence, but Blade Sulzberg is there. He's had a lot of kicks today. So is this man Van Dam, who he finds at half forward. Yeah, I've actually been trying to work out who's playing on Sulzberg and who's playing on Van Dam, and I've got to admit I can't find out who it is, Dave, because no one's near them. That's right. Now, Blade Sulzberg is now one of the best midfielders in the league. He's just developed year on year. He's with the Tassie Devils program. But uh, he's one of the elite players in the Tasmanian State League. There's no doubt about that. Van Dam close to the man on the mark. Oh, geez, he's judged this well, I think. He has. He snuck it in the right-hand goalpost. Oscar Van Dam, an answering goal for the Bombers. 8-6-54. They lead North Hobart 3-3-21. Rob, you're going to tell me they're all individual goal kickers for North Launceston, aren't you? We've worked together for a while, Dave. You're reading, <laughs> reading your, your mind. mind. So, uh, yeah, eight individual goal scorers and a, a great uh, reward record there for Oscar Van Dam. He's been working really, really hard today. One of the Bombers' best. And a bit of trivia you might know, his grandfather, Robin McKendrick, who served a lot of years on the council but also was the chair here of the Inveresk uh, Authority. So, uh, and, and a North Melbourne supporter, unfortunately. But uh, he'd be very proud of his grandson and what he's doing today. He's had a fantastic game, no doubt about that. Dave Gruber inside 50s this quarter, please. Uh, eight for North Launceston, uh, six for North Hobart. Okay, so pretty even. Three goals to two in this quarter. Still got probably another 10 minutes to play before half time. Sulzberger again. Handball, not great, to space. Cox Goodger overruns it. And there is Dipoli Kubank. Now McGuinness takes possession. Scoops it out there to Sandrick. Kick not effective. McMurray's in there. Tackled by Dipoli Kubank. A good contest. Young Wilbur McMurray on debut. Been in really good form in the D-League. Oh, nice work there by McGuinness. And balls the big fella in Janes. Round the corner, kick to half forward. McCulloch nearly takes it. Try to kick off the ground was Leif Heber. Bales will get there. Sweeps it away, Bales. One, two with Payne. Back to Bales. Running from half back. Gee, that's great vision. Finds Chug over there. He's drifted up. Options galore. He goes the long one to Aganis. Who's going to have to fly from behind of Edmondson. Didn't really get close to it. Here's a Hearn. He's tackled maybe without it. 
umpire says no play on deep in the forward pocket Leary lays on an opponent there ball up Chris Sayer won't be happy. I told him I'd have a bit of fun with him with the AFL score today. Oh, we Dave. started there, have we, at Canberra? They have. I was going to tell him it was 82-0, to zero, but it's actually not. The Giants are up 14-0 to zero early stages of that first quarter. Oh, I'm sure there's a five-goal breeze. <laughs> there's, uh, we're now with Leary. Left foot kick. Funny old kick might work out right to Sam Simpson. Has support from Avent. Back now to Bales, who's been everywhere. His kick smothered nicely by Norton. Ricochets to Barrow, backs himself the young man. Handball's a good one to McGuinness. On we go now. Chain of handballs with Leaf Heber. McCulloch, open forward line. This is where the dangerous North Hobart kick here towards Yates. Picks it up beautifully. Matthew Yates, so he didn't have support. And now it's uh, with eyes, but he coughs it back to Yates, who takes it on the tackle and might have won himself a stoppage here. Yates had support there from Stevenson, but he just couldn't find him. No. He swung in the tackle. No, he did a, uh, almost a 360. But I like the look of Yates. He's a, he's a likely type, isn't he? A big-bodied sort of a player. And as you mentioned, a premiership player last year in the D-League day. Shepherding the ruck. Rob, free kick here. It's going to go the way of Cohen Stevenson, I believe. Number 13. Well within scoring range. Should square it up at three goals each for the quarter. So uh, North Hobart would be very, very happy with that. Get it back under five goals. It's been a few seasons now in North Hobart, originally from Devonport. I think he's Matthew's son, isn't he? I think so. Once again, text Rob Sayward if we can get <laughs> verification. Stevenson kicks on goal. Umpire works. And signals one behind. Oh, I think he is. My memory says uh, he is. Matthew was a, a very uh, effective ruckman for Latrobe, a, a quality player yep. there for them in their uh, in uh, his career. Cox Goodge waits on the handball to Nicholas. Now to Bennett. Bennett at half back kicks to the, the wing. McGinnis rises high. McGinnis puts it away with my hands. Chance here for Stingle. Took on a couple of tackles there. Might have got one high, but uh, ref, uh, referee. I was thinking of the basketball last night, Rob. <laughs> the umpire says it's a ball up. Yes, we did the Tornadoes game last night. I went down to Waverley, but uh, good effort from a young team. I saw they're Rebuilding. waiting on an import. They're waiting on an import to get here, aren't they? And they're waiting on one to get uh, permission from Basketball Australia at the moment. That's the issue. Here we go with Connor Downham. Now he thinks he got one high. No umpire saw it. So it's going to be a ball up. 35 out from North Hobart's goal. Lee. Strong play there from McCrimmon, I think it was. Trying to fashion something here, North Hobart. But they're relentless. Their North London defence is Van Dam. Gives and goes there with Depoli Kubank. Now here towards Avent. Avent bounces once. Over the top now to Aganis. The big fella lumbers after it. He left to throw it on the boot. He gets the handball away towards Van Dam. Chance here, Ahern inside out kick will fall short. McLeod did well to trap it in front of him because that could have bounced dangerously somewhere else. And it's see, he sees it out of bounds right next to the right behind post. It's just an example of how those Northern Bombers halfback flankers are working. I mean, uh, uh, Van Dam got the ball up here and there, he's inside 50. So uh, working really, really hard. Gannis and Meadows, shark there by McCrimmon. Going to be another ball up. 8 6 54 to 3 4 22. The Bombers lead by 32. Quick restart. McGuinness, one of the best of the Demons, no doubt about that. Gets it to Leaf Heber at half back. 24 minutes gone. Over the top now to McCrimmon, who's got some space he wants to run on. But he stops and waits for options. Gets it up here to Stevenson. Cohen Stevenson looking inside. We'll have to go the safe kick down the line. The Culloch front position. Eyes from behind. Flew. That's a bit early. Ball up. Another goal here, I reckon, and make Adam Best a very, very happy yeah, Dave at half time. I agree. They've had a much better quarter, there's no doubt about that. They conceded a, a couple of goals early, but they've really tightened up. Polly Kubank there. Now Cox Goodger handballs to space. Taken by Zach Barrow. Tackle from behind by 
Bales. Well, that's same note. They won't want to give up a late one here either, that's for sure, because they did in the shadows. You remember, Lee took that mark and kicked a goal after the siren. They won't want to do that here. Lee, lovely tap to Cox Goodger. Kicks out out of mid-air. Kilpatrick's there, so is Chug. Neither can take the mark. Cox Goodger barrels in. No free kick. Ball up. And Cox Goodger diving in there. That's one that sometimes they get paid for the legs free kick, of course. Yeah. It was okay on that occasion. Push and shove there. Don Pitt involved. As Don Pitt dives in this time, he gets himself a free kick. High contact. The young Tassie Devil. Half time. Half time here at Utah Stadium. It's North Launceston 8 6 54. Leading North Hobart 3 4 22. Robert quarter time it was 5 4 to 1 1. So in that quarter it was North Launceston 3 goals 4 to 2 goals 3. As it's just a little bit of afters after the siren. Players milling about. We'll just keep our eye on this. Let's have a quick wrap up here, Rob, with the goal kickers because we do have a special guest who will be joining us in just a few minutes. Kath McCann, Executive Director of the Tasmania Football Club. Good to see the players separate. Yeah, absolutely. No need for that sort of stuff. So with North Launceston, eight individual goal scorers. Sam Simpson, Brandon Leary, Oscar Van Dam, Jack Ahern, Declan Chug, Harvey Griffiths, Alex Lee and Tony Agonis. And for North Hobart, Josh Cleaver leaving all goal scorers on the ground with two and Connor Downham with one. So it's a 32-point lead to North Launceston at half time. Groups might uh, just have time to get through your stats before we go for some messages and uh, get our special guest to join us. Yeah, it's to half time. North Launceston on 32, North Hobart 12. Clearances, North Launceston 23, the Demons 18. It's pretty even that quarter. is 11 to North Launceston, 10 to North Hobart. Inside 50s, again, even that quarter, 10 to 9, but North Launceston on top, 27 to 16. Marks inside 50. Uh, the Bombers are on 10, North, Launce uh, North Hobart 5. Intercept marks, pretty even, 5 to North Launceston, 4 to North Hobart, and free kicks, um, 8 for North Launceston and 6 for North Hobart. OK, so, yes, North Launceston on top there in a lot of those areas. Thanks, Dave Gruber, for his stats to half time. We'll take a break. When we come back... We'll be joined by the Executive Director of the Tasmania Devils Football Club, Kath McCann. Back in a moment. Are you struggling with tech hassles at home? Whether it's setting up new devices, fixing existing ones, or needing one-on-one -on -one learning and support, I'm here to help you. Hi there, I'm Alex from rent -A grandson I make house calls resolving issues with TVs, computers, smartphones, printers, modems, and more. Unlock special pension and concession discounts plus a loyalty program for extra savings. For reliable tech support that comes to you, call 0488668324 or visit rentagrandson.com.au. Your convenient, reliable solution for all things tech. rent -A grandson a sponsor of City Park Radio. Put your trust in Rainbow Building Solutions, the experts for all your fully engineered garages, sheds, carports, patios and awnings. We can supply kit-only materials for your builder or owner-builder, or fully project manage, which includes council approvals, all inspections, concreting, and, of course, the installation. No need to deal with multiple contractors. No stress. Rainbow Building Solutions is a local, family-owned Tasmanian company with over 20 years' experience. For a free no-obligation quote, please call 1300 737 910 or visit our website, rainbowgarages.com.au. Rainbow Building Solutions, a sponsor of City Park Radio. This sports broadcast is brought to you by LGAS. For all your LPG needs, talk to the locals with knowledge. Yes. LGAS, call 13 uh, 11 Cass not available at the end. She's uh, not City available at the moment, according to the line. Here at City Park Radio, we'd love you to become a tour guide okay, for our museum and studios. Waffle. We're excited to invite passionate individuals to join our great team as volunteer tour guides, eager to contribute your time and knowledge to enhance our visitor experience. As a volunteer, you'll have the unique opportunity to share the rich history and engaging stories of our museum, open to visitors Monday to Saturday, 10 till 2. Our museum showcases an extensive collection of historical radio artefacts and broadcasting details, offering insights into the history of radio and City Park itself. 
Full training will be provided. If you have a few hours a day to spare, once a week or fortnight, phone us today on 6334-3344. City Park Radio. She's still not available live. Okay, back here at Utah Stadium with Dave Moore, Rob Soward and uh, Dave Gruber. We're just uh, having a bit of trouble getting in contact with Kath McCann, Rob, but uh, we'll uh, keep, keep trying there and uh, Ron will come across the line in a moment to, if we can get Kath there. Um, for a bit of a chat, uh, these things happen. She's a very busy lady, no doubt. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll keep having a bit of a try for that one. Uh, Rob, I don't really want to go here because it's just been such a, a bit of a divisive week. Um, City Park Radio, this is uh, Ron at the moment. Kath, is it? We'll have Kath there, do we? Right, just hang on a sec. I'll do a couple of things and I'll get you through. Okay, we've got, this is live... Uh, Live here with Ron Camplin on City Park Radio. Uh, he's tracking, tracking yeah, Kath down. Done pretty well. So uh, we'll just we'll, we'll just keep chatting, Rob, until uh, we get that uh, notification that we got Kath McCann with us. Yeah, Kath McCann, have we got you there? Kath's on the line. Good afternoon, Kath McCann. Good afternoon. We've got you there. Fantastic. Uh, welcome to City Park Radio. City Park Radio. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. No problem at all. Uh, look, uh, just my first question is a pretty general one. Uh, since you've been involved with the Tasmania Devils um, on the board and as executive director, what have been the real highlights so far? Oh, well, that's a great question. I don't think I've had that question previously. Um, certainly, I think the, there's a couple of highlights. One has been the establishment of the board and the way in which the board are working together. Uh, that's been absolutely fantastic. And... We're, uh, um, you know, in terms of the composition of the board, we're, we're quite a diverse bunch, which is fantastic. We're deeply connected to Tasmanians, Tasmanians. Um, but certainly bringing different perspectives to the table. So I think that's been, that's been a great highlight. And it has shown just the clients which have been together that, um, you know, from a strategy and from a delivery perspective, we're, we're committed and, and we're absolutely committed to, to seeing this through. So that's been great. Uh, the other major highlight for me has been the community engagement. Um, I had the absolute pleasure uh, from late last year and through early this year to be out on the road talking to, talking to, but more importantly, listening to communities across the state. And, um, yeah, just to connect with, with rural Tasmanians, um, you know, with all different backgrounds and to learn more about what this football club means to them, uh, that, that was an absolute highlight. So... I think they're probably the two, and 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 the the, the third would certainly be uh, the launch of the club on the 18th of March, and just the, the celebration that 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 was, and you know for me to see the joy um, that that brought to, to so many Tasmanians, whether here on the island or, or off the island, um, yeah, that, that's been an absolute highlight. So I think they're probably the top three. Fantastic. I'll just Fantastic. pick up there your comments on the launch. Now, what a great idea to do it in different spots around the state to include as many people in as many communities as possible. Um, did you come up with that idea? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Well done. Um, well done. We had a lot of concepts put in front of us, and we've talked about this, and, and a lot of them were, and you could imagine, you know, Hobart-centric or one specific area or, or more elitist in terms of the types of people that were you know, putting that on and, and revealing it. And when, when I say I came up with the idea, it was an extension of the community work that we've done. So I don't want to take any personal credit for that, but rather recognise that the work that we're doing from a community perspective, it became really obvious to us that this launch needed to be handed back to community. And what better way to do it than to simultaneously run events, uh, probably quite ambitiously, um, but to celebrate all at once across the island and also on the big island, um, because we know this club means a lot to, to many people. So from our perspective, I think it would be a missed opportunity not to let as many people as possible be involved. And, um, yeah, we were just thrilled by the response and, and the celebration, you know. And it, it, what's absolutely wonderful is to now, uh, retrospectively, obviously I was only on one site, as anyone was, but to hear what happened on other sites and the celebrations that were had all over the state is fantastic. That's fantastic, Kath, and well done with those launches. It certainly was, was brilliant. My co-commentator this afternoon is Rob Soward. Rob, you've got a question for Kath. I have. Uh, hi, Kath, and I just wanted to pick up on something you said there. I think where you're on a winner with what you're doing with your community engagement and the launches is you know as well as I do that if this club's going to succeed, it's got to be owned by Tasmanians, as we've seen the Jack Jumpers, for instance. Um, so... 
lying ahead, lying we've, we've ahead, heard we've some heard stuff around uh, the Devils uh, maybe devils not coming on board in the VFL next, VFL next year. What do you think? What, what do, you do you think can happen in that space, obviously, to address something that will bother people there? I know there's been a lot of commentary in the media about that this week. Oh, sure. So um, one of the you know next major decisions that I think uh, the community and certainly the football community are really waiting for is the sequencing of teams uh, in terms of when when they'll enter or when we will enter the VFLW, the VFL, and of course the AFLW and the AFL. So that's something that's being worked on at the moment, and um, and it's a commitment from the club that we'll be in a position you know later this year um, to be able to have that locked in, and we know how important that is to obviously the local community um, in terms of really understanding what's going to be happening uh, over, the, over the coming years and what people can start preparing themselves for. Those decisions are, are significant decisions for the club uh, and certainly for the AFL as well. And, um, obviously, they're significant for, for those that are participating in the system now and certainly um, our current athletes, but also those coming through those talent pathways to know what's next. So, from our perspective, getting that decision right and making sure it's the right decision, uh, obviously from a from a talent pathway perspective, but also for, from a long term perspective for the club, is, is something that we're we're really serious about. Uh, in terms of what might happen once that decision's made, I think we just need to wait and see what's agreed in terms of the time, uh, and then from there determine, you know, what what might be the activities, initiatives, the different types of things that need to be put into place. So appropriate opportunities are given to athletes, particularly those current athletes, I think that could be really important, to make sure they get the opportunity to participate, you know, at that uh, senior level, senior representative level, um, as, as we journey into, obviously, the VFL, VFLW, the AFLW and the AFL. So we're not currently at a decision-making point, but, but we are continuing to work through that, and we know that that's a high-priority uh, matter for, for many, many, many stakeholders. Kath, one of, one of my questions was going to be what, going what to comes be, next what for the Tasmania, Tasmania, Tasmania Devils. We've had the branding, the launch, etc. Et I think you've just answered the question a little bit, that the whole thing around the VFL and VFLW. But on your work streams, what else is happening in the next six months? What, what are the imperatives? Yeah, so um, our establishment phase business plan is broken into three distinct pillars, and they are foundation stands and facilities. So... Um, in terms of priorities, the organisational foundations and really making sure we get our governance right and getting the business up to become operational, that's a key focus for us. So there are all those things that, you know, those that work in business know they're really about getting policies and procedures and risk management and governance and all of those things in place. And we're a start-up organisation, so there's a fair bit of work for us to do, to do in that, that area. So that's one. Um, in terms of fans, uh, we, we, we found ourselves in a position where we've nearly got 185,000 founding members and... Um, you know, we probably didn't expect to be in this position now, but what an amazing position it is to be Absolutely. in. Um, but with that comes a huge responsibility, obviously, to deliver for our fans. So huge focus on fan engagement. And when we look at fan engagement, we're in the process literally uh, this week of doing some planning around our retail and our merchandise, making sure that we can get adequate product in front of, in front of our members that want to obviously be wearing the brand. That's a focus. Our next raft is community um, engagement and making sure that we continue to extend, continue to invest and continue to be present in communities across the state. That's a key focus for us. And then, of course, making sure that we're actively engaging our members through all of our communications and all of our content. So there's a lot of work for us to do in that stream. Uh, we're off to a great start, um, but we want to make sure those that have you know, really invested in us and come on board as a founding member feel like they're getting genuine value, but more importantly, feel like they're a part, they belong to this club from the start. And our last major area, as I said, is around facilities. So um, we've got a range of... Um, uh, facility projects that are on the go, of which we're a stakeholder of, uh, and making sure that we're really actively present in those and participating. Um, obviously, that's the Training and Administration Centre uh, in the south. We're looking at the stadium also in the south. And who could forget what is incredibly important, but the upgrades to UTAS, and only had a briefing on that yesterday, uh, just to see what's happening from a, from a development perspective. Very exciting. And, of course, the upgrades there at Dial Park, which are really important from a talent pathway perspective. So... When we look at, if you like, the, the work streams that we've got, they are the key priorities. But, of course, the other the other thing that we have spoken publicly about as a club will be the appointment of a CEO. Uh, that will be a focus for us, you know, looking to have an announcement there later this year and, and as we move to an operational phase, uh, having commencement of a CEO in 2025. So there's a lot to do, um, but I feel really confident that it's a really clear plan. And as I said, the board has just been absolutely tremendous in terms of 
getting in and, and delivering. And, you know, we've got a range of different partners and stakeholders that we're working with. And I think with all the goodwill and commitment, but also further the capability and capacity that we're well on track to move into the operational phase that we're aiming for. That's brilliant. That sounds like a lot of work, Kat. So you've got some more people coming on board to help you. Oh, look, I couldn't be more excited to tell you that the um, total staff of the Tasmania Football Club um, up until last week was two. Um, <laughs> obviously, we've got a board, and just worth noting, the board and board positions in the AFL are all voluntary. Yep. So our directors are giving a tremendous amount of, um, amount of hours and commitment into the organisation voluntary. But in terms of on the payroll, um, we've just put on two new staff. So we're really, really excited about that. And that's doubled the size of our organisation. Um, and as I said, we, we've got a clear plan, but everyone is, there's no doubt, everyone's working hard, but I think we're working smart as well. So uh, there's a lot to do, but a clear plan, clear accountability, and, and just a genuine passion uh, to see this through to definitely this next phase as we move to operational, which will be a really, a really tremendous step forward for the organisation. Kath, uh, Rob again, that's Rob just again. wonderful news. And again, I wanted to congratulate you and your team. hundred and I think you said 185,000 foundation members, which shows you how supportive Tasmanians are. I got my family's membership pack in the mail yesterday. Got my, devil, got my, got my devil's guernsey ordered. But uh, I, I guess, yeah, no, right on board. But I guess the challenge, because you've got so much interest, the challenge will be those communications around it, won't you? And we were talking off air. There's obviously been a lot of chatter this week here in the north about a few different football issues. And when the communications perhaps aren't there, people colour in the picture, don't they? They sometimes with things that aren't right. So how are you going to handle that challenge of just keeping people informed all along the way, particularly given with the level of interest that you've now got? Yeah, look, it's a great question and something that's, we take genuinely seriously and I think your observation around, you know, in the absence of information, it leaves people wondering and, and that's never ideal for anyone. So um, we're, we're working really hard to, obviously, <laughs> we've got a very big database, um, which is tremendous, but it's setting up regular communications and engagement opportunities for, for all of our members, the key focus. Uh, one of the things that we're only working on literally this week is around making sure that we've got a really clear framework so people feel like they're getting great information and whether that's off our social media channels or from our website or through email communications but probably most importantly from actually fronting up in communities and being present I think that's that's incredibly important in Tasmania as we know so um, we're working hard to do that as I said we're only a small organisation the one thing I would say and you know the beauty of being able to speak to, to your listeners is whereby there's feedback where we could do things better or could do things different where we're a very humble organisation in terms of knowing that we don't have all the answers and solutions and, and we are really open to feedback about how we might do that best for all Tasmanians. So something it's probably a, an offer that I extend to your listeners to have a think about and, and certainly providing us with feedback, we're, we're really keen to hear that because uh, we want to get it right, um, but we want to be humble enough to know that, as I said, we don't have all the answers and there's plenty of people with great ideas about how we can do that well and, and, and better into the future. Kath, I've got some feedback. Got some feedback. Oh, every good uh, football follower needs a beanie and a scarf. When can I get one? <laughs> Look, you you have asked me that question at a very timely time. Oh, good. Um, oh, good. One, of the, one of the commitments that we've made um, is to make sure, and, and you've probably heard the organisation speak publicly about um, being the largest community sporting organisation in the world. That's our aspiration. And and certainly our further aspiration to that is to make sure every Tasmanian benefits from this club. So we've got a, a definite commitment to work through our merchandise planning, but to make sure that we're bringing Tasmanian product into the market so Fantastic. that Tasmanians can feel not only a sense of um, a connection to the products that they might be wearing or, or utilising, whatever that might be, but also to make sure that we're giving back to Tasmanian businesses. So... It was only yesterday where we were meeting with a, a number of Tasmanian businesses to work through a plan, and I think in the next, probably in the next few weeks, we'll have a plan that we're going to commit um, to communicate out to the community and out to our members. And I can assure you that in that will be uh, in time for winter, 
uh, a, a beanie and a scarf. And, Brilliant. Um, and we want to make sure that's a good quality product that people can proudly wear. Um, and ultimately can give back to Tasmania, which is really important to us. That's brilliant. That's great news. news. Hey, we're going to have to wrap up because we've got both teams back on the ground. We're about to get underway. We could have talked for much longer. Uh, It's been fantastic to have you on. Congratulations all you've done so far at board level and as executive director, and it's onwards and upwards for the Tasmania Devils. Thank you. Thanks for your support and thanks to your listeners and to everyone who's participated or become a founding member. We're incredibly grateful. So thank you and go the Devils. Fantastic. Thanks, Kath. Thanks, Kath. Thanks, Kath McCann there on Kath City McCann. Park Radio, the Executive Director of the Tasmania Devils. And we're about to get underway here uh, for the second half. It's North Launceston 8654, North Hobart 3422. Yes, Chris, I can see you down there. Um, we got carried away there with uh, talking, a uh, great interview there with Kath. And uh, what do you got for us, Chris? I was in the North Launceston rooms, and he was not happy. You think okay. you know, north of five goals up. Um, he reckons they're still... They're, uh, they're not impacting the contest. They're nowhere near the, the goals they set for their stats. Um, and, and they're not ruthless enough with a low work rate. So uh, he was not happy at all, the North Launceston coach. I, did, I know she had a bit of a chat to Adam, Adam Bester as you were walking to the boxes. I had a chat with Adam Bester, came in the boxes. He was happy with that second quarter. And he's, he, he, he says they're not far behind, just need to be a bit more accurate in front of goal. And uh, he's uh, um, quite positive. Isn't that strange? Quite opposite to the North coach. Fantastic. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, good second quarter there from North Hobart. Any injuries uh, finally, Chris? No, no injuries to report on both sides. We'll talk to you during the third quarter. We're underway here, second half. The round three clash here, and straight away, Brad Cox, Goodge is in the middle. He kicks inside 50, looking for Griffiths. Clears him, Aganis, clean bowls him as well, and uh, goes out of bounds. Ford pocket for North Launceston. So Cox, Goodge into the centre there, Rob. Yeah, they're uh, certainly the not mu- certainly not mucking around, just like the Giants aren't mucking around <laughs> in Canberra. Twenty-eight to seven, I know uh, Chris Say will be interested in that one, and that's uh, in the shadows of quarter time. Well, he likes the early start, Chris. He'll be uh, actually, I think he's on the radio tonight, so he won't be able to watch the, the Saints at all. He'll have to watch it on replay. He's on Real in the Years, following us later on. There's another bounty thrown. Will have to happen. He might play some hits from 1966, uh, which no, was the year of their only flag. No, uh, I think it's 74, which yeah. was uh, North Melbourne's first appearance in the grand final. So. Tigers, Tigers that year yes. over the Kangas. Yes, that's right. 50 years ago, eh? So, boundary throw in. Charlie Meadows up against the Gannis. Taking it away here. Nicely snapping for goal for North Launceston. I think that might have been Geordie Payne. It's out of bounds on the full. In fact, it was Geordie and the pink boots. Like when these youngsters wear different coloured boots, Rob, for commentators. It's just one of those little markers that you've got when you can't see a number. It is. It's the complete opposite. I remember one year we went to Launceston and they all had the same haircut. That's the young right. Fellas and it was a nightmare. Absolutely. <laughs> Here we go now. Sam Wright from fullback. Kicks long here looking for Leaf Heber. Almost takes a strong mark in front. Spills off his fingertips out of bounds. So big quarter here for North Hobart. They just stemmed the flow there in that second quarter. They're staying in touch. It's a long way back, of course. But a couple of goals here just might lift their confidence, give them some belief. City Park Radio next Saturday, 5-1, to one, North Launceston and Glenorchy. From this very ground. Charlie Meadows, look away handball to nobody in particular. Lee finds Leary by, uh, sorry, Bennett by hand. He gives it to Theo Ives. Now back to Leary. Pitt back to Ives. Great handball by North Launceston. They linked up beautifully. Kick to half forward. It's marked by Chug. So Chug's going to play on. Two kicks out from goal to the goal square. Again, it's one on two contest. Big Tony has taken the mark. He had players at the front, players at the back. And he just put the big jukes up and took a strong mark, strong grab. He's going to play on round the corner. Tony Aganis hits the post. Gave him the big build-up, Rob, and he let me down. He did let you down. It was a good mark, though. It was a great mark. He he positioned himself beautifully there. But isn't it, again, interesting, Theo Ives, who'd been so dominant up forward for North the last couple of seasons, is playing back and doing a great job of it. Instigated at the start of that play. Just great run there from the big fella. Oh, that's a funny old pass from Kilpatrick to Norton. Play on, says the umpire. Thought he might have marked it, but uh, he must have spilled it. Umpire closer than us. And not also be pretty touch and go on distance too, I reckon. Yes, so that could have been the issue too, Rob. Well picked. Meadows wins his own tap. Inside out kick, not great. Straight to Event. 
Event sweeping kick here to Nash. Bo Nash inside 50. Aganis again. Big Tony's done another one. Gee, that was a strong mark in the contest. And uh, gee, uh, a couple of times in the first half, I thought he was going a little bit one handed with those contested marks, but those two marks he's taken in this quarter, vice like grip. Yeah, promising signs. Uh, he's a, a big step up coming from Longford. Uh, uh, I think an underage or reserves player there, but uh, fantastic start to this quarter from him. He's only 30 out directly in front. He's kicked one so far today. Aganis has missed again. So a couple behinds to start the third quarter. 8-7 at 55 North Launceston. The D's 22, 3 4 22. Kilpatrick kicking out from fullback. It holds up a little bit in the breeze. Aganis, three marks now in this quarter. Kicks to the centre of the ground. Kicks semi smothered though. Nice hit by RJ Watson. Picks it up one handed. Then he gives it to Cleaver who gets tackled. He gives it to Barwick who gets tackled. So under pressure, the Demons, they couldn't escape. But they got it to centre wing. Yeah, Bombers just can't be wasteful with those opportunities, Dave. They're going to be disappointed with the last couple of minutes. Sulzberg by hand out of Bales. Has the vision there to get towards Nash, although DePoli Kubank's got it now. Left foot, kick inside 50, straight down the throat there of well, the North Hobart defender in David Monks. Monks wants to switch it. But, uh, all avenues are chopped off there. He has to go longer. It's a half back. Knocked away from Janes. Handball from Kubank to Fletcher Bennett for goal. The defender, Fletcher Bennett, has kicked one. Oh, great work there from Fletcher Bennett. Drifting up from the back line. And uh, that man again, Oliver Nine. Tapoli Kubank, number 32, with a little assist there. And uh, nine goals now for North Thompson, 9 8 62 to 3 4 22. We don't see Fletch up forward very often. We don't. And uh, he's become the ninth goal scorer for the Bombers today. They're all multiple, uh, all singles. But uh, the Poli Kubank, great involvement in that, Dave. Uh, certainly a, a very likely type. But uh, just reward for effort there from the Bombers. They've uh, certainly come out and started this quarter really, really well. Had a couple of opportunities through the agency of Agana, Aganis. Uh, but that time, Fletcher Bennett. Uh, salutes and uh, extends the Bombers' lead. First five inside fifties again, yeah. just like last quarter to North Launceston. Yeah, good pit groups. They're dominating the start of the quarter again. Here's Dom Pitt to Van Dam. Don't argue with Kilpatrick. Handball's poorly to Lee. Now, the umpire said the city might have, uh, was a throw there from Van Dam. Kick from Sandrick goes to McGuinness, who luckily gets a high tackle because that wasn't a great kick from Jack. Sandrick. So attacking his time here is Tyler McGuinness. Big first quarter, a little bit quieter in the second. Kicks to the teeth of goal. Nice fly there from Theo Ives. Strong intercept mark. Kicks it beautifully to Nicholas, who has space in front of him. Decides not to run on. Said he kicks it to the middle of the ground to Pitt. Pitt has runners everywhere. This is Bo Nash. In towards Griffiths. He rises over the back, and he rose. He got on the back of an opponent, did Harvey Griffiths. Free kick coming back to David Monks. A little bit early, I think, on that one from Big Harvey. Oh, the kick is not bad. To Norton. Short to McLeod. Back to Gus Norton. Oh, he kicks it straight out of bounds in the fall. The best day there is Gus. But, uh, good quality player. So free kick will be taken by Bradley Cox. Good job. Twirls the ball in his hands. Brad, Brad, Brad. You can hear on our effects, Mike. Plays on now. Funny old kick. Evades the grasp there of Norton. Spills out of bounds. So boundary throw in. It's getting Chris there to uh, ask Richard Bennett if that's Fletcher's first goal on TSL footy. Can't recall him kicking another one. I could be wrong about that. Isaac McCrim has done a good job with Brad Cox Goodger today. He's he has got a run with roll with him. Real t good tag there. Another stoppage here. Tyler McGuinness takes the ball. 9-8 plays 3-4. Come 
comes out here towards Pitt, who's been busy. He's pushed off his kick slightly. It will spill out of bounds. So a little bit of a lacklustre start to the uh, second half, Rob. It's been all bombers, as Groove said, with the inside 50s. But, uh, yeah, nothing to write home about at this stage. But I guess from a North Hobart perspective, they're, uh, they're only uh, an extra goal down than they were uh, 10 minutes ago. Now he's throw in. Aganis, which is the front of the contest, taken by Janes. Here's Geordie Payne getting it to pit this way, that away. Gets hammered as he kicks it. it gets the kick away nicely to Oliver Dipoli Kubank, who's 30 out directly in front. It's one of those players today that hasn't had a mountain of possessions, but every involvement has been quality. Yeah, it has, and he seems to read the play pretty well too, Dave, in terms of his positioning and where he gets on the end of it. So we'll see if he can get reward for effort and become the 10th Bombers goal scorer today. Dipoli Kubank leans back on that. Kicks it to the right. So spurning some opportunities here, the Bombers. 9-9-63. 3-4-22. Inside 50s for Dave Gruber. 8-1. 8-1 this quarter clearances. 6-2. Right, getting on top the Bombers. Kilpatrick, dangerous. Tries to spot up McCrimmon. Swarming of the Bombers. McCrimmon does well to fight it out. And they'll make it a stoppage here at least. Just they, they cover the options well, don't they, North Launceston? They just can't get out of their defensive 50, the, the uh, Demons. No, nah, they're working really, really hard. But I'm wrapped to hear of Adrian Smith's displeasure at halftime, Dave. That's I mean, good. It's easy uh, when you're in front to be coasting, but he's demanding more from his players, and uh, he's getting rewarded at the moment. Lee Febber, handballs back to McCrimmon. Almost a big clash there, McGuinness. Didn't quite take it. He might get a second opportunity here, Tyler McGuinness. We'll see that shocking injury, Rob. I don't know whether you were watching the, the Queensland Tassie game last year. Tyler McGuinness was uh, knocked out and fairly motionless for a long period of time. Yeah, real nasty. Good to see him yep. back here doing what he does best. Nathan Jones, athletic player. But Lee wins the tap with the left hand. Dom Pitt got the high tackle. He's been very good, Rob. He's got a lot of the ball. I only think 17 years of age, still very young. Debuted last year. Short to Chug. Declan Chug took up a big grabs in that second quarter. So they're taking their time with the patient build up now to Blade Sulzberger. He's right half forward. Invited now to play on. Kicks to the pocket. Griffiths rises high, but a good spoil there from David Monks. Knocks it out of play. Yeah, they've got a few players like Pitt, haven't they? Just those young guys starting out their career, but just their work rate is just something that the coach and the, the, t- the team would be delighted with. The only throw in, about 15 metres around, 20 metres around from the Bombers' goal. Lee, that's a set play out the back here towards Cox Goodger, but Leif Heber gets there first. Back to McMurray. Young Wilbur kicks it up the wing. Little shove there from Yates. Space behind. Ives is there. Just gets around traffic like their witches' hats. Then kicks inside 50. Leary the only option. But good mark in front. I think that's Zach Barrow. And Zach Barrow debuted last year for the Demons. Injury interrupted season 2023. Kicks close to the boundary line. And that's another one for the Demons where they've kicked it straight out of bounds on the full. Adam Bestar would not be happy with that. Fletcher Bennett inside to Nicholas. Never plays a bad game, Mitch Nicholas. To Bennett once again. Now to Bales. Goes a longer option. Far wing to Mitchell. Takes the mark. Ambles off to Ives. Shrugs the tackle of Stevenson. Right foot kick. Bit awkward. Inside 50. Oh, Leary. Back position. No, no marks paid. He emerges now to Nicholas, 55 out to the pocket to Alex Lee. Has the height advantage over Kilpatrick. Kilpatrick did well. He made it a bit of a contest. Perhaps Lee could have taken that mark. Yeah, he did really well. He put his knee up to protect the zone where the ball was going to drop. But that's great play there from the North Hobart defender. But uh, Interesting marking contest there, Leary and his opponent. Leary has the back position. Usually it's the guy in front who gets paid, but neither was paid. No, no. Leary, I think, was trying to claim it. But uh, anyway, they had another inside 50 as a result. 
Nathan James inside out up the wing. There's Nicholas again. Takes possession. Oh, geez. Handball's intercepted nicely by RJ Watson. Now to McCulloch. First inside 50 for a while from the Demons. McCulloch, he's kicked it straight to Sam Simpson. At centre half back. And now they'll cruise off here with the Bombers. Nice bounce for Sulzberger. Chip kick over the top to Griffiths. He's right against the boundary line. Declan Chug has got a lot of latitude in half 40. Takes the mark. Handball's off to a player. Been under pressure. Left foot snap. Hits the post. I'm not sure who the player was who delivered that. I think it was uh, Jack Ahern right against the boundary line. 9-10-64, 3-4-22. Been a bit wasteful, haven't they? Yep. They've missed, uh, see, it's 9-10. It was uh, one, one goal four. Yeah, thanks, groups. One goal four this quarter. RJ Watson. Left half back. To make his decision, gets attacked from behind, just gets the kick away. Stevenson flies, makes it a contest. Nicholas is tackled from behind by Norton. And that'll be a ball up. So not uh, the free-flying footy we saw in the first half here. Inside 50 is Dave Gruber this quarter. 11 to 2. Wow, 11, and we're only playing 15 minutes. High tackle, Wade. Free kick, Demons. Going to Isaac McCrimmon. As Rob said, has had a bit of a job today on the on-ballers for North Launceston. Kicks long, inside 50. Chance, but again, takes his fourth mark for the quarter. Across the defensive 50 this time. Out of Cox Goodger. Little chip kick. Gives it straight up to David Monks, who's been pretty good across the back line. In fact, that's Ryan Edmondson, beg your pardon. Former Lindisfarne player. Sam Wright. Inside 50. Gee, there's always two or three bombers flying with one North Hobart forward in those situations. Lockie Mitchell to Ives to Griffiths, who's down back. Ives, funny old kick. Might work out all right. Player tackled. Ball up. It makes me wonder if they're not... Uh... Getting a little bit tired, Dave, early in the season, warm day, because there's been a lot of uh, turnovers this quarter, hasn't there? Uh, blokes kicking to, almost picking players out on the other side. On kick inside 50, front position, McCulloch, good spoil from Ives. Hamill comes out to Elmer. Elmer, the centre square to the athletic Leary. Plays on straight away, hits the ground running. Kick here for the advantage of Geordie Payne. He's out the front here of Barrow. Payne gets it. Oh, and good tackle, though, from Zach Barrow. Ball, yell the uh, North Hobart crowd in front of us here. And that was a good one-on-one. -on -one. And young Geordie Payne met his match there in Zach Barrow. Great tackle. Gets to McLeod with a little bit of space. He's got a wider option now in Sam Wright. Gets to the ball, but he just taps it in front of him straight to Griffiths. Turnover. Declan Chug, 48 out, launches for goal. Doesn't punish the Demons for that turnover. Off to the right, one behind, nine goals, 11, 64, 3-4, Deserved better, that. Did you see that handball from Harvey Griffiths? He just set Chug up there beautifully. Yep. So, uh, again, another one they've left out there, the Bombers. Oh, that kick looking from the Guinness wasn't great, but it might fall for Norton. He does a little spin, handballs blindly. Lots of Bombers are there. Norton mops up, though. Back to McGuinness. Always seems to get out of trouble. Sandrick, Tyler McGuinness, a second involvement. Gets away from the tackle of Pitt. Kicks nicely to half 40 towards Leif Heber. He runs onto it, Leif Heber. Just gets pushed off his kick at the last moment. Two on one situation here. Jack McCulloch on his left foot. Gets back onto his right. Snaps towards goal. Won't make the distance. And two bombers actually both spoil it over the line in their desperation. Yeah, I wonder whether Jack could have launched on his left there, Rob. He just dwelled on it a minute. Yeah, Went back to his right, and the two Bombers defenders were able to get back to the square. He just didn't get enough purchase on it, did he? Well, he's got another chance here, though. He intercepts the kick out from fullback. Back now to McCrimmon. Loose ball. Taken by Ives. And Ives kicks it wide here towards Lee. I'll tell you what, Rob. Theo Ives to the back line has been a masterstroke. He's been terrific. He's been absolutely fantastic. He's just got the size and the athleticism back there. 
burrowing yeah. through there is Geordie Payne. The other thing too, working against North Hobart, those sort of scratchy old entries inside 50, the Northern Bombers, I reckon, are the best side in the competition from broken play. So when you're doing that, you're just playing straight yeah. into their hands. The ball comes out and they're away. But, but uh, as you say, DOIs, look, that's a master stroke, isn't it? Yeah, it's been... Uh, he basically swapped plays with Declan Chug. He's been pretty good up forward, so done well with that move. Here's Blade Sulzberger. Has support from Lee. His kick smothered nicely by Sam Wright. Gets they, cheer from his supporters in front of us. They lost a couple of their defenders out of their side last year, didn't they, if you think... Uh, well, Connor H Young's injured, so yeah. he, he'll be back at some stage. I saw him out there before. Hubbard's gone out to Longford. Yes, correct. Uh, I'm just trying to think, uh, and I've gone blank on his name, uh, their defender who's gone to play on the mainland, basketball background, well, Connor Leafling. That's it, yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Ives has been masterful back there. Leary to Kubank, uh, Oliver to Polly Kubank, who marks... 25 out directly in front. Brave mark there from the youngster because he knew there were people around him. He was running full pelt at the ball. Not sure who the other North player was who just uh, gave him a little bit of space at the end. But a second opportunity for young Oliver. Well, I want him to get on the board and be the 10th different goal scorer. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I love that sort of stat. Yeah, so do I. Just uh, having a look at the replay on the stream here. Yeah, it was Harvey Griffiths who just pulled out at the last moment, avoided the collision. Oliver DePoli Kubank kicks his first goal for North Launceston and extends their lead out to 48 points. So a good goal there for the youngster. He's had a good game today. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. And uh, Chris, you can add to the Theo Ive story down there at the boundary. Yeah, I was talking to Theo, Theo's dad in the, in the change room, so, who's the son, and Theo's the grandson of the jazz great Don Ives. And uh, his dad was saying he prefers to play in defence. In fact, he did all his played all his junior years in defence. Theo did. Okay. So he's quite happy because he has the freedom of running up the ground, which he does a fair bit. Now, did you manage to catch the uh, speedy Richard Bennett for an answer to the, uh, is it the Fletcher Bennett first goal in TSL? He's so speedy, I can't catch him. I'll get right. him at three-quarter time. Okay. And that Don Ives reference is a fantastic one. What a, what a great uh, contributor to the arts scene he's been in Tasmania. Absolutely. From the ball up, Cox Goodger towards Van Dam. Oh, Cox Goodger with a follow-up. Paddles it in front of him, just goes bang against Callum Gilpatrick. Out of my way, son. Spillage goes to Sam Simpson, who'll kick another goal for North Launceston. Five out of those six points go to Brad Cox Goodyear. He started the move and just took on Kilpatrick, who's still a bit sore and getting up from the ground. And that just cleared away for Sam Simpson, who converted nicely from about 40 out. Yeah, it did. The pressure around the footy is something we've associated with Brad Cox Goodyear all through his career, and no better example there than get out of my way. Sets his teammate up beautifully, and Sam Simpson becomes the first multiple goal scorer for the Northern Bombers today, Dave. Yeah, much upsetting for you, Rob. It did. I was hoping Cox Goodger would kick it because uh, he hasn't kicked one <laughs> yet. So uh, anyway, great effort, great team play there, inspired by the Premiership player and highly credentialed. Won everything I reckon there is to win Brad Cox Goodger. Yeah, he you can feel that he's playing with freedom now. He doesn't have the, the responsibility of coaching. Adrian Smith's doing that. I'm sure he has input. But uh, just to to get that freedom. With the second ball up, Groob's uh, inside 50s and clearances, please. Uh, yeah. It, it, uh, inside 50s for North Launceston, up to 15 now. North Hobart just have the five. Clearances, yeah, North Launceston getting on top there, 10 to 6. Make that 11 to 6. No, they didn't quite get that one. Yes, they will, because uh, Sulzberger kicks inside 50. Nice ball from Monks. Ball 40 out for North Launceston's goal. Player down, Leary. Just in back play. Just holding his leg a little bit. What a cop one there. It's up, uh, might have been a little corky situation. Just held the thigh there a little bit. Ball up, Lee. Looking for Cox Goodger, but Meadows does pretty well to clear the area. Barwick pursues Nash. Nash too much pace. Inside 50, Ahern takes the mark. Jack Ahern. 35 out, 45 degree angle. He seems okay. Trainer just running out now. He just waves the trainer away. Yeah, I think you're right, Dave. Just a little knock, a little corky, maybe. Jack O'Hearn kicking to the town end. And the game just starting to get split open a bit, Rob. 54 points the margin. 
This would make it 10 goals all of a sudden. Jack Ahern kicks pretty well, but it's just off to the right. So one behind, 11, 12, 78, with Hobart 3, 5, 23. We know North Watson are fit and they will run this game out. They will, and that's the big fear, I think, for uh, Adam Bester and his team. They know that the North uh, Launceston boys aren't going to run out of steam as the game goes on. But I guess it's, it's hard to be critical uh, when you're so far in front. But they've left a few out there, haven't they? They've missed a few gettable ones. They have. We might do a bit of around the grounds, Rob. You've got uh, your old app up there. I'll, I'll do some TSL. Do it at the next stoppage because umpire McEntee is throwing the ball up on the far side. Aganis gets the ball out of bounds nicely for us so we can look at some scores. And a pretty close at Windsor Park. Clarence, 20, lead Launceston, 19. And G. Lauderdale, big start at KG5. They lead 42-7 to 7 over Glenorchy. And uh, at uh, Canberra? Yeah, in Canberra, Giants up 40-22. to 22. Okay. Second, second quarter. All right, Saints hanging in there. Yeah, a little uh, interesting score there at Windsor Park. We saw Launceston really improve last week and take it up to the Tigers. 21 points was the margin early in that last quarter. As the ball now comes to half forward. Your free kick against North Hobart's McMurray there. Come to Bo Nash. He's going back as if he wants to have a crack, Rob. Man on the mark's on the 50. Now he plays on. Kick's not bad. Oh, that's almost a good mark to Ahern. He got the left hand to it. Couldn't drag it in. Up the wing now to Stevenson. Can they build something here, the Deeks? Stevenson. Left foot to half forward. To the front of the contest to Downham, who meets Bennett. Bennett with better strength on this occasion. To Polly Kubank. Little handball over the top there. Looking for Bailey Elmer, his fellow devil. Another devil there in pit. It's tackled, maybe high. No, says the umpire. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Lonnie, just a one point down. It's great. In the second quarter. Yeah, look, they really were impressive, weren't they? Their endeavour last week in that first two and a half, three quarters was really, really yeah, good. Yeah, just, just blew out in that last 10 minutes. The, the Tigers just had a bit of extra poise and experience. Ricocheting ball. Little handball comes out to Leaf Hebber to Norton. Good smother from Nicholas. Sees it out of play. The other thing, too, I think that would be uh, worrying the Demons a little bit is just that how they break down when they go forward. I mean, we're almost at three-quarter time. They've kicked three goals. So, yeah, they've certainly got some talent up there that can kick goals, but just that delivery and that last kick's uh, been the thing that's brought them undone a little bit today. Here's a chance. Now Stevenson, he almost kicked on the right, then gets back on the left. Little chick kick finds Connor Downham. Downham, one of the goal kickers for North Hobart. He plays on, launches it inside 50. Bouncing ball, kicked out of the defensive area by Stingle. Foot race here, Hasty and Simpson. Simpson gets there first. Gets the handball over here towards Bennett. Gets it on the bounce. Further afield now to Dipoli Kubank. Chips it to Payne. 60 out. Gets around on the right foot. To the goal square and spots up Declan Chug. 10 metres out directly in front. Thank you very much. So good work there from the youngsters of North Launceston. Dipoli Kubank and Payne. And uh, questions have to be asked there how Declan Chug got so much latitude. We'll ask you that question, Rob, in a moment. Declan Chug right in front. Chips it over the umpire's hat. Goal to North Launceston. That's their 12th. 12-12-84. 3-5-22-2. Sorry, 3-5-23 for the Demons. Second goal to Declan Chug. Yeah, look, he would have hoped Adrian Smith would have been coach earlier, I reckon, because he's thrown him forward, hasn't yep. he? And, you just asked how did he get that separation. I think one of the things that Chug brings in that forward role, being a former defender, you, I reckon you have a different outlook because you're used to how the ball comes at you, how you have to read it. He's carried that forward into the forward line, hasn't he? And he's, he's looked dangerous every time it's gone up there. He's got those couple of big bodies in front of him, and he's a smart player, Dave. So uh, just a combination of smarts, reading the play, and he's landed his second goal. He has indeed. And the margin out now to 61 points. Four goals to zip in this quarter. The Bombers. Nice little push there for Cleaver. Kicks it inside 50 to Jack McCulloch. And he hasn't had many opportunities today, Jack McCulloch, but he's got one here. It's a good long kick for goal. He'll deliver from right on 50 on a 45-degree angle, maybe a bit sharper than that. Right behind this one. Beautiful day here at Utah Stadium. 
almost in the mid 20s not too shabby for mid-april comes the skipper jack mcculloch kicks towards goal across the face won't make the distance see that's second grab mark is it no bounty up says it was out of bounds on the full for yates could bring it in Ooh. dangerous kick could hear rob sour there but uh, all's well that ends well for North Launceston. And that's the end of that quarter. And they've delivered four goals, six in that quarter. To move from eight goals, six to 12 goals, 12. And the Demons just the one behind, 3-5-23. Total dominance that quarter by the Northern Bombers. As you said, Rob, they probably left a couple out there they could have scored. Uh, it looks like uh, when we when we do the cross down, we'll get the answer. I just saw Richard Bennett gesturing there. But we'll go through the goal scorers quickly for North Launceston. We've got a couple of twos there. Sam Simpson with two and Declan Chug with two. Singles to Leary, Bennett, uh, Van Dam, Ahern, Griffiths, Lee, DePoli, Kubank and Agonis. And for North Hobart, no addition to Cleaver who has two and Downham with a single. OK, Chris, give it to us. Was that Fletcher Bennett's first goal? Mm, da -da. No. Oh, um, he kicked the goal. <laughs> kicked the goal uh, previously, not this year, against Lauderdale. But that was his first goal this year. OK. Thank you, Chris. We'll get you out to the huddles there. See what the uh, coaches have to say. Well, Rob, uh, before we, actually, Greaves has got his stats ready. He's quick off the mark here. So we might get those before we get some thoughts from you, Rob. OK. To three-quarter time. Hitouts, North Launceston, 44. North Hobart, 19. Clearances, 35 for North Launceston, 28 for the Demons. Inside 50s, North Launceston have, have doubled North Hobart. They're 46 to 23. Marks inside 50, uh, North Launceston strong there again with 16 to North Hobart, 6. Intercept marks 10 to 7, North Launceston's way. And free kick's pretty even, 13 for North Launceston and 12 for North Hobart. Big disparity in the marks inside 50s, Rob. Talk, you know, talks a lot about the entries they've had into their forward 50. Yeah, it does. They've certainly had a cleaner look at it. We've talked before about how the Bombers' defence and combined with some, some you know, a, a bit of average delivery from the North Hobart mids has put their forwards under pressure. But take nothing away, uh, you know, the, that disparity in marks. The Bombers really ramped up a gear that quarter, didn't they? I mean, North Hobart only managed one behind and, and lucky at that. Bombers, you know, uh, left some out there, as we've said, that if they'd have kicked six or seven or eight, as they perhaps could have done, they would have blown this game wide open. But uh, there's a lot to like about North Hobart, Dave. I really, really, you know, like their young talent. I like the way they go about it. They remind me a bit. Remember a couple of years ago when Clarence had a lot of youngsters yes. coming through? You just get the feeling you get some games into them and all that. And we're seeing the benefit of that with the Northern Bombers. They've got a lot of young guys they've got games into, and they're certainly stepping up and, uh, and delivering on that promise that they've had. Rob Sauer for City Park Radio Sport at three-quarter time. It's North Launceston 12-12-84, North Hobart 3-5-23. Some messages from our sponsors, and we'll be back for the last quarter action. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. A sponsor. The Launceston Players is presenting The Pillow Man. Imagine a totalitarian state where a writer is being questioned about a spate of murders, except they all bear similarities to his short stories. Is this life imitating art or something more sinister? We'll leave it to you to enjoy this black comedy. The Pillow Man is on stage for one week only from April 24 at the Earl Arts Centre. For details and ticketing, inquire at the Princess Theatre box office. The Launceston Players, a sponsor of City Park Radio. This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas. For all your LPG needs, talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61, a sponsor of City Park Radio. Three quarter time here at Utah Stadium. It's the Bombers 12 12 84, leading North Hobart 3 5 23. Don't forget, we're back here from 5 to 1 next Saturday for North Launceston versus Glenorchy. So, interesting to see the Pies. Obviously, improved in the off season. So, uh, that'll be a good game as well here at the home of football in Northern Tasmania. Round the grounds in the TSL. As I consult the app here, uh, pretty close there. It's still a quarter time score here, I think, at Windsor Park. It's Clarence 3 2 20. Leading Launceston 3 1 19. And a fast start for Lauderdale. Pretty uh, stung, I think, from losing their first two games. Uh, 8 6 54. Lauderdale leading 
uh, Glenorchy 117. So a margin there of 47 points. Rob's checking the AFL score. Uh, Giants up by 19, 47 to 28 uh, as we're approaching half time there in Canberra. Okay, so both huddles there are together. Uh, it's interesting these days, Rob, how long they spend in their little line groups, for want of a, a better uh, description, before they get together as a whole group. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a game how things change. I mean, we'd all remember Dave back in our day. Everyone came in and the coach gave you a rocket. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now they, they talk in their groups and so forth, which is really powerful. I guess it's about them owning what they need to do in their various lines. But, uh, yeah, just interesting how the game evolves. And I'll be interested, too, when we hear from Chris how their coaches' takes on things. I don't think Adam Best would be overly thrilled with that quarter. No, especially after they fought back really well in that second quarter, three goals to two. Um, and it was an opportunity there to even get closer, but uh, really from the, the first bounce in that quarter, Cox Goodyear with that first clearance really set the scene for the Bombers that they were really going to, to put the game to bed in that third quarter. Yeah, he did. And I'd be interested too, and Chris might get something about that for us. Jack Sandrick, we haven't seen a lot of him. We talked about him early on as a, you know, he's one of the North Hobart prime movers. Suspect he's carrying an injury? Yeah, I, he, I was, think he, is. He, he was limping there before when he was running around trying to keep up with Oscar Van Dam. It looks like. Something like a calf, I'd say. And he, he's coming off now. Yeah, he's starting off the ground. Chris Sayer, down to you at uh, ground level. What did Adam Best have to say? Uh, Adam was quite positive uh, with his address. Uh, he uh, uh, wants them to build. He's giving them freedom to take risks and build on. He's got 30 minutes left. Uh, he spent a lot of time shuffling names on that magnet board. So there'll be quite a few changes on the field. Um, but he's given his players carte blanche to uh, take risks and take this game on. And uh, fantastic conditions down there still, Chris? It's still lovely. No wind. Um, the sh- the sh- uh, shadow starting to come across the ground. But it's, uh, it's a lovely day. I can't see any injuries. Yeah, you got a, a program on City Park Radio coming up tonight. Talk to us. Yes, looking at uh, 1974. That's 50 years ago. 50. It's half a century. It's, in- <laughs> it's amazing. Any, any deep purple? Uh, yes. yes. They, I'll be they, listening. Their Burn album was released. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. So stay tuned. Five o'clock? That's right, yep. No worries. Reeling in the years from five o'clock on City Park Radio. Just about to get underway in this last quarter. So a little bit of pride to play here for the North Hobart Demons. Last quarter action here, City Park Radio, 103.7 to 96.5 and via the TSL YouTube channel. And it's the first clearance here to North Hobart, although McGuinness gets caught, but he gets out of the tackle. Oh, dummies the handball, sells the candy, kicks inside 50. Chance here for Wright, who might have been swung forward. Handball's over the top here to Leaf Heber. Taps it back towards Wright. But uh, North, uh, North Launceston defence holding strong once again. Nash to Bennett. And now it's Cox Goodger, Stingle. Little kick inside the centre square to Sulzberger. As a player running for him in pit. Pitt kicks long here, looking for Chug. Gets one hand to it, can't quite get the second. That was a Hearn, in fact. Gee, good tackle there. Hasty, though, gets it back to McLeod. Little turn, gets himself out of trouble. Kick ends up here with Nathan Jaynes. Deep inside his defensive 50. Ambles off again to Hasty. Nice kick from Charlie Hasty to McCrimmon. Links up back to Hasty. Funny old kick. Going to be a turnover here. Pitt. Hands it off to Cox Goodger. 48 out, Brad Cox Goodger. Put it down on the score sheet now. Brad Cox Goodger. You can't give him any latitude from 50. And he slots it straight through the middle. 13-12-90, 3-5-23. And we love to see it. After all these years, I never get sick of Brad Cox Goodger kicking a goal like that. No, beautifully called, Dave. We never get sick of that. And if we had a dollar for every time we did that, I'd be in the Bahamas somewhere like that, I reckon. He just is a class act. He's done that for years, and it's just a, a great sight in football here at Utah Stadium, isn't it? feel a bit sorry for young Charlie Hasty there. He made, made the running out of defence, then just a little kick on the right foot. Tried to be a little bit too cute. Yep. Turned it over, came back the other way. But I'll tell you, the, the real positive for me, Dave, out of the report from Chris at three-quarter time, I love that Adam Best has told him to roll the dice and have a go. Like, if you're going to get beat, if you get beat by 90 points as opposed to 65, does it matter? That's how your young players learn. So, uh, full credit to Adam Best for uh, encouraging his players to have a crack. Inside 50 for North Hobart there. And came in from McCrimmon, but uh, chopped off by North Launceston. 
It's now with Dom Pitt, who's had a lot of it today. Gee, risky handball. Comes off nicely, though, to Elmer. Gutsy stuff. Elmer inside 50. Mark to Geordie Payne. And we love seeing those sort of risks being taken. I know if it doesn't come off and it goes back the other way, but that was a really good handball from Dom Pitt. It had to be centimetre perfect to Elmer, it was. Then Elmer lowered the eyes and he uh, found Geordie Payne. Yeah, that would be something you'd hope that when they do their review this week, Dave, that the coach mentions a couple of young players doing a really, really clever thing there. Geordie Payne from 48, nice long kick by the youngster. Hits the post. 13-13-91 to 3-5-23. Dave Gruber, I know we've only had three minutes, but what are the inside 50s? A bit more even at the start of this quarter. Three to the, the, the Bombers and two to the Demons. Okay. And that little Rob Soward blind spot there in the pocket to McMurray. Goes back the other way, thankfully for us. It's to Hasty. Hasty by foot to Norton. Underneath the scoreboard here at Utah Stadium. Nice mark by Nathan Jaynes, the boy from Burley in Queensland. Kilpatrick kicks up the wing and presenting as Cohen Stevenson. Nice linking up here by North Hobart. Now it's Leif Heber. Two kicks out from goal. Goes straight away. McCulloch and Ives. Great battle all day. McCulloch nearly took the chest mark. He got to the drop of the ball. Now Bennett's tackle. Chance here. A little fumble. Almost a chance on goal there from Yates. If he had picked it up, he could have snapped it. But that's going to be a ball up 20 metres out from the North Hobart goal. Haven't kicked one since the second quarter. Lee taps it towards the boundary line. Elmer, make sure it goes out. Still an attack for North Hobart. Look at those scores around the grounds again in the TSL. 72 Lauderdale, 7 Glenorchy. And uh, now it's Clarence skipping away a bit. 6-6-42 to 3-1-19 against Launceston. Bounty throw in. Lee wins the tap. We've got a hold here, I think, or a high tackle. Might go to North Hobart. They're going to get an opportunity for goal here. And it's going to be Josh Cleaver, who's kicked the two goals today out of the three for North Hobart. It's a 45-degree angle. He'll deliver from about 48 out. Taking his time. Josh Cleaver, right on the edge of his distance, I'd say. Doesn't quite make the distance. Lee Heber's there. Stevenson, snap for goal by Zach Barrow. Just offline. One behind. 3-6-24, the Demons. North Launceston, 13-13-91. Great kick from Bennett. Finds Pitt at halfback. Now we've got a whistle on play. Now we've got a ball on the ground. There's the problem there in back play. Might have been, they might have to come back and take the kick, I think. They will. So I think uh, there's a bit of a discussion going on here between the umpires. It's going back to fullback. Bennett's going to have to take the kick again. I, I suspect there were two balls on the ground, which was an issue. So they'll need to reset again, the Bombers. Bennett kicks outside defensive 50. It's a nice mark there by Nathan Jaynes. Jaynes inside 50. This is a good kick here. Waited for Barrow, but to spoil once again from Bennett. He just goes about his business, Rob. You know, he's in the best players every week. Yeah. It's one of the elite defenders in the competition. Again, he just reads the play so well, Fletcher. If I was coaching against them, I'd actually man him up. Because he reads the play so well, he, you know, he's that outlet, intercept marker, and he's just, uh, as you say, week in, week out, he gets it all done, doesn't he? Lee to Pitt, kick smothered. A lot of players around the contest. There's Zach Barrow. Can't escape. Neither can Michael Stingle. Stingle's had an interesting game. He started in the centre and got a lot of it. I've got a feeling he's been pushed back in the second half. Yeah, he's been a lot quieter than... Uh, he started like a house on fire, yep. didn't he? He really looked dangerous, so... Change of role. What a great tap out from Lee to Cox Goodger. It's like the Martian Lily of uh, the TSL, Cox Goodger and Lee. 
for those younger listeners, Martian Lee were a wicket keeper bowler combination back in the 70s, absolutely. 80s. Absolutely, and we'd remember those, Dave, I, I, like uh, the three of us, we're about the same vintage, glued absolutely. to watching uh, Lily and Marsh do their stuff, against the West Indies particularly. And Greaves is a Tomo fan, he comes now to Lee Fairbutt, centering ball, overcooks the kick. Theo Wives takes it comfortably, sweeping kick to Bennett, decides not to run on. Centering kick. No, taken by Elmer. Kick's not great. Coughs it up. Fumble by Monks. Opportunity for a vent. Fumbles a couple of times, then he picks it up. It's handball away now to Nash. Griffiths on the boundary line. Underground handball to Declan Chug. To Bolly Kubank in space. Back to Pitt, who was under pressure. Griffiths couldn't pick it up. So good pressure there from the Demons on the ball carrier. Didn't allow North Francis to escape from that situation. I was traumatised when uh, Tomo ran into Alan Turner, I think it was. Yes. Am I right? Oh, just terrible. 1976. <laughs> second test against Pakistan. Adelaide Oval. Here it comes now. Sounds like it impacted you too, Dave. It did. <laughs> it did. His leaf ever off to Norton. Amble over the top. Couldn't quite get it there. To his teammate in RJ, Watson. They're going to sweep it away here. Sulzberg just waits for an option. Gets through a couple of tackles. Now to Pitt, who's under pressure. Lee will just have to boot it out of here. No, he doesn't. Sensibly gets it back to Pitt. Swings it to half forward. But waiting back there is Callum Kilpatrick. Kicks the centre towards McGuinness, but reading it well was Bales. Got in the way. Took the mark. Gave it to Van Dam. Inside 50. Leary will get this. No, not quite. Good defence from Hasty. Chug there working hard. Declan Chug picks it up. Handball over the top. Chance here for North Launceston. Snap on goal near side. One behind. That was Jack Ahern there with a the snap. 48 to 29 in Canberra. Giants up. And just maintain that three goal cushion. Half time. Kilpatrick works it out. Kick close to the boundary line. Knocked out of play. Might get round the grounds in the TSL as well while we're at it. And at Windsor Park, it's 9660 Clarence, 3119 Launceston, KG5 14690 Lauderdale, 117 Glenorchy. So Lauderdale, Rob, were sort of pre-season favourites, were always recruits. A couple of disappointing losses, but gee, looks like uh, they're back in form today at KG5. Yeah, they are. And I think, uh, it, you know, we do find with new recruits coming in, it does take a while to gel, doesn't it, with Absolutely. new people coming in. So uh, unfortunately, Glenorchy have run into them today. Oh, uh, Tony Aganis there might have got a ball in the stomach. Might have been winded. Play goes on. Sam Wright to half forward. Lovely mark. Ives just dashes off. Kicks to the centre to Zapoli Kubank. Impressive player. Waits on the handball. Gets it to Nicholas. We know his delivery can be elite, and it is on this occasion. Straight down the throat of Brandon Leary. He really set the tone for the day, Rob, didn't he, with that great snap in the first quarter. Yeah. Faded a little bit, but uh, got a chance here for his, help me out, second? Uh, Leary, this will be his second. Second, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He did miss one earlier. He did. Uh, get that goal in the first couple of minutes. Chance for a second here. Ten minutes into the last quarter. Fades to the left-hand side. Off hands. Isaac McCrimmon's got it. He's had a good game today. Over the head of Barrow. Plenty of backup, though, through Charlie Meadows. Over the top to Cleaver. Josh Cleaver has a man all by himself at half forward in Connor Downham. He's right against the boundary line, though. North wants to defend a stream back. That's good delivery to Stevenson, who muffs the mark. Should have swallowed that now. Sam Wright, little snap. Sam Wright doesn't get the very fortunate bounce. Goes away to the right. One behind. 3-7-25. 13-14-92. It's the one goal kicked in this last quarter so far through nearly 12 minutes. Harry Bales, one of the best on the ground for sure. Nice ball there on Meadows on Pitt. Falls to Downham. His kick wasn't great looking for McCulloch. McCulloch the follow-up. Handball's in the direction of Norton, but reading it well was Jackie Avent. She's got a man all by himself here, Ahern. The mountain of room. Waits for the handball to Dipoli Kubank. Kicks inside 50. Chug. Dicklin Chug nearly takes it from behind. 
On the follow-up, Leary's got it. Might have been caught with it. He was in correct disposal. Good tackling in the back line there, Geordie. In fact, it's Harris McLeod, sorry. Harrison McLeod. Ball now with North Hobart. Kicked up the wing. McCulloch has to go spoiler against Bennett. Both get up a bit gingerly, but to no harm done. I think uh, the viewers would have noticed there a moment ago, Dave, when that ball went inside, went, started to go forward. The way those Bombers defenders swarmed back and covered the space made it really, really hard for North Hobart to get on the end of it. And to do that, you've got to be fit, don't you? You've got to have that fitness to get back quick, cover the ground. Charlie Meadows worked hard today. Gets the kick now to McCulloch. Jack McCulloch. He's got a couple of targets inside 50. One of those is Yates. Thumped away from him. At the fall is Downham. Gets there first. Paddles it in front of him. Two on one contest though. He's got Sam Simpson in attendance. Comes out to Leaf Heber right against the boundary line. Handball to space. Bales with pace and dash. Kicks to the wing. To Poli Kubank. Hands off to Jack Avent. Has Chug there all by himself at half forward. His sideways kick here looking for Payne. Finds him 30 metres out directly in front of goal. Just another example, wasn't it, of the way yep. they spread and run and work for each other? Yep. I'm look, I can't wait to see them play Kingbra on this big ground. As I soon think that'll as, be a fantastic encounter. As soon as they get it half back, it's just a chain of foot passes, hand passes. And all of a sudden, the North Hobart defence is under pressure. Yeah. There's space there. So, Geordie Payne. Chance for his first goal of the day. Out to the right. Another behind. 13, 15, 93. 28 scoring shots to 10. A couple of stats for Dave Gruber. Uh, hit outs here, North, North Launceston continue on their way there. 7 to 3 this quarter. Clearances, North Hobart um, ahead there. 5 to 1. And um, inside 50s, North Hobart 8. Uh, North Launceston the seven, but they've kicked one goal three. Yeah, haven't made the use of those opportunities in this second half. So eight goals six at half time, so five nine in the second half for the North Launceston. Ball now with Sam Wright, right half back for the D's. Finds Cleaver, one of their best. A couple of goals. Here's Norton and uh, McCulloch. McCulloch takes the mark. Jack McCulloch kicks to the teeth of goal. Chance for Nathan Jane's in front. Can't take the mark. Ives, here's the numbers swarming now. Stingle to Sulzberger. Elmer to Poli Kubank. All by hand, these possessions. In fact, it's Nash. Nash has uh, Declan Chug free. He's 60 out. Lowers the eyes. Leary should have taken that mark. McGuinness on the follow-up. Tries to rein it in. Two players lay on McGuinness, and uh, Leary would like his moment back here again. He should have taken that mark, Rob Sowett. Yeah, he should have done. He'd sort of spent it before he got it. But it's interesting, I was just watching that matchup. McGuinness was covering off on him. You know, it's a tricky one, isn't it? We had the same last week, didn't we, with Riley playing back for Launceston. I mean, McGuinness is so dangerous. Can you afford to park him in the last line of defence? But I guess the flip of that is yep. you need him back there to, uh, to get his hands on it and repel the uh, attack, don't you? Yeah, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul scenario. Yeah, absolutely. But Leary, uh, yeah, he'd like his time again on that one, I reckon. He's got a boundary throw in. Left forward pocket for the Bombers. 16 minutes gone. Probably another 10 minutes left in this contest. Early finish today with the uh, 1 o'clock start. From the hit out, Van Dam. Hooks it back inside. 50 Griffiths. Rises high. Can't take it. It's out of bounds. Right next to the left behind post. Margin 68 points. That big second half from North Launceston. Really putting this contest to bed. Charlie Meadows. Gets it straight out of defence. Elmer drops a mark he should have taken. Avent gets away from trouble. Squares it to Simpson. Sam Simpson, running his brother's old number. Has a target inside 50, and that's Jack O'Hearn. Leary came out with purpose. 
Nearly ran into a Hearn, but uh, they worked it out in the end. Jack Ahern, number 14, he's kicked a goal today, as uh, a lot of North Launceston uh, players have. Chance of his second. Uh, set shot goal kicking might be a little training drill during the week for the Bombers, Rob? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> they've had so much of it. And, uh, yeah, you sort of uh, even look at that and say half those behinds become goals. They've certainly missed some missable, uh, some gettable ones, I should say. It's a nice kick from Ahern on the left foot. Kicks the goal for North Launceston. That's their 14th. Their second for the last quarter. 14-15-99. Plays 3-7-25. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. It's probably where the difference is at the moment, Dave. It's the depth, isn't it? I mean, we've talked before about the versatility of the Bombers' back line, but the Bombers' forward line, I mean, there's a stack of options up there. The fact that we've got so many different goal scorers, it just makes it really hard for a defence, you know, if you've got a focal point, if they know that, for instance, they've got a... They shut, uh, you know, Harvey Griffiths down yep. and, and, and that. But they've got all these other guys that just crop up. I mean, there's uh, some multiple goal scorers there now. They're just dangerous when they go inside. Uh, different types of dangerous tools. Someone like Leary that plays taller than what he is. He's got all the tricks. You know, just a really well-balanced side. Absolutely. There's uh, Charlie Meadows. Gets it out to Cleaver. Tries to get it back to Meadows. Tackle there, Lee Feber on Jack Avin. So we've got a bit of a motocross happening somewhere underneath here. It sounds like, Rob? Uh, yeah, it sounds like Chris is down there. He's found himself a, uh, a, a little bike to ride yeah, around on. Right. It comes now here towards Payne. Van Dam measures it to Declan Chugger. Never seems to have anybody on him. Kicks inside 50. A Hearn there in the battle. Charlie Hasty tracks it. Gets it to Barrow. Sweeping handball to numbers here. Janes to Norton. Has to duck back inside. Janes under pressure. And that's that classic North Austin pressure. It's turned it over now. It's with Simpson. He's 50 out. Centering kick. Nash. Bales deserves a goal after his game today, but it's a poor kick. It lands in the lap there of Gus Norton. He kicks outside. His defensive 50 now to Hasty. Measured to McMurray. Gets it on the half volley. McMurray's handball doesn't quite get the mark of Barwick. McMurray follows up, runs into Van Dam. He might get penalised here. He does. Made the run in the youngster, the debutante Wilbur. But uh, just a bit more poise there from Van Dam. He goes sideways, finds Bennett. Another short pass to Jack Avent. Might be Alec Croswell on that thumpster. That's Could be. Could be. He's done a bit of work down here in the <laughs> May area on one of those, I reckon. <laughs> Measures the pass to Leary and gets it to Aganis, who just had 20 metres all around him, any direction you like, inside 50 and takes the chest mark. I really like what he brings to the Northern Bombers, Dave. Not only uh, his forward craft, but that ability to give a chop out to Lee. You got the impression last year, Kingborough wore Lee down, didn't they? Yep. You know, those two big, big bodies. But uh, this young fellow certainly brings a lot of excitement to the table and... Uh, and uh, like to see him cap his good work off with another goal. He's 30 out directly in front. Tony Aganis. Umpire barely moves. Great goal, Tony Aganis. Good play again from the Bombers. 15 of 15 at 105. North Hobart 3 7 25. That's an 80 point margin. And it's really blown out since half time, Rob. And just a, a bit of a tight effort there from the North Hobart back line. So the amount of latitude that Tony Aganis had there. All by himself, 30 metres out. Yeah, look, they've, they've been worn down. I mean, it is a big uh, adjustment coming to play on this big ground after the confines of North Hobart, for sure. Um, bombers uh, eat this sort of stuff up. But uh, lots of bright signs Lots of bright signs today for North Launceston in terms of what they're getting out of some of these players. Um, and, and, you know, again, on the flip side, I think there's been some, some, bright, some green shoots for North Hobart as well. So they've got to learn from today. Clarence 11 7 73, lead Launceston 3 4 22, and Lauderdale 90, lead Glenorchy 7. Handball from Pitt, four to the contest, to Payne, lovely handball to Van Dam, spots up Cox Goodger, champagne football there from the Northern Bombers, out of the middle. As Jimmy Russell would have said, we've got the close one by losing to those others. Absolutely. Just uh, pinpoint skills again from some of those players with the hands. 
Cox to Goodge a running was, player. Cox Goodge was the only person that could mark that. 48 out when he delivers, I reckon. Just inside the 50. Here it is. Cox Goodger. It's out to the right this time. Got the distance okay, as you'd expect, but uh, one behind. 15 16, 105. 3 7 25. So no goal since half time for North Hobart. They get two in that second quarter when they started to make a bit of a run at the Bombers. Inside 50s this quarter, Dave Green. We'll get to you in a moment. It's been an intercept here. Ahern's got it. Centers it up to DePoli Kubank, who marks 30 out, slight angle. Dave Gruber inside 50s. 13 to the Bombers and uh, 9 to the Demons. Okay. Too many. And I noticed North Hobart's clearances have been on top this they've quarter been on top as well. This quarter, yeah, they've won those so far. Yeah, 8 to 4. Marks inside 50 this quarter. Huge. Oh, yeah. 7 to 0. North Launceston. Yeah, they've dominated that stat. DePoli Kubank for his second. His debut for North Launceston. He's just offline again. So another behind. 15 17, 107. 8 6 at half time. So 7-10 in this second half for the North Launceston. So down to the last three or four minutes of this game, you'd expect. McGuinness can't t- quite take the mark. He's got support. Can't rein it in. Vent goes in hard. Spins around. Left foot kick inside 50. McLeod's back there. He's spoiled. Cox Goodger on his right foot. Snaps with the right. Cox Goodger doesn't get the bounce. Stays in play. Sam Simpson against Norton. One-on-one contest. Simpson taps it to Poli Kubank. Smart kick. Cox Goodger goal. Good play, North Launceston. Smart from to Poli Kubank again. And a good one-on-one contest there from Sam Simpson. As uh, the ball stayed in play, he just got on top there of Gus Norton and managed to get it to DePoli Kubank, who had the smarts to get it to Cox Goodger. Yeah, we talk about, you know, I was mentioned before, some green shoots for North Hobart in some things today. Some green shoots from the Bombers would be uh, DePoli Kubank. I mean, gee whiz, you know, he's, he's really, not that we're keeping individual stats, but I'd really love to see what his stats are. He's been, he's been everywhere. And, and not only that, Dave, playing with someone with far more experience, isn't he, in terms yep. of playing more mature than his years? And I'd like to see, even though his efficiency on goal hasn't been great, he's missed a couple, his disposal efficiency be way up there. Yes, absolutely. He hasn't wasted one, I can remember anyway. No. So from the middle, Tony Aganis now on the ball, as is Geordie Payne. So they've got a few that swinging through there. Here's Elmer, scoops it back to Pitt. His handball smothered. Oh, off the ground there. Strong contest, Avent and Cleaver. Ends up now with the Bombers with Pitt. Over the top to Payne. He's got Van Dam on. Goes there now by foot. Van Dam with the hands to Pitt. Risky, comes off. Kick under pressure, though. Skews out to the right. Bales might get there. But uh, good mark and defence by Hasty. He plays on. Spots up McGuinness. Chance for a last forward thrust here for North Hobart. Leif Heber's got a bit of space here. He's up against uh, Ives. Two and one here. Stevenson, Ives and Leif Heber. Ives wins out. Tries to get it to Avent. Theo Ives again. Has his pocket picked there by Leif Heber. Angus Norton for goal on the right. Scoos away to the right. One behind. 3 8 26 North Hobart. 16 17 1 13. To Poli Kubank, to Nash. Is it wide to Ahern or keep it in play? Over the top here for Griffiths. Up against Edmondson. They both fly. Neither can take the mark. Here's to Poli Kubank again. Handballs to a teammate. Kicks it inside 50 to Geordie Payne. Handballs over the top. Declan Chug. Mark from the goal square. We took, took it in the goal square. Kicks the goal for North Fonts. It's an easy as you like. From the handball over the top. And that's another goal for North Launceston. There's a bit of a procession now, Rob. 17-17-119 to 3-8-26. I think the uh, danger, as we've said all day, Dave, was going to be this last part of the game where they were just going to run over the top of North uh, Hobart with their superior fitness on the big ground. And you didn't have to be Nostradamus to pick that. I mean, uh, they're a very fit side, a very good running side, used to the big ground. And uh, that's what's happened. But... Uh, 
you know, again, they're, they're sort of almost raffling it now, aren't they, when they go forward. There's several players that could crop up and kick those goals. And Declan Chug, who I think has been one of the Bombers' best today, certainly re- re- rewarded for effort with his third goal. Just seems to get space and get separation. Yep. Just, uh, you know, we know he's a very fit young man. Here we go now through McMurray out of the centre. Got a bit of experience in there. But uh, cross half back, it's Mitch Nicholas. Bo Nash kicks to half forward. Can't find a teammate. Out comes Edmondson. Kicks long here looking for Leif Heber. If he gets a friendly bounce, he's away here. It's back on his right foot to Yates, who takes a mark on the 50. Matthew Yates plays on. Kicks towards the goal square. They're lining up here to take it. Carl Stevenson can't do it. His cleaver is caught high. There'll be almost a certain goal here to North Hobart. In fact, it's Connor Downham. The number 35 who's got the ball. He's kicked a goal today. Kick four for the season. Kicks a goal for North Hobart. It's Connor Downham in the dying moments of this game. And that's their fourth. 4 8 32. North Botson 17 17 119. And uh, pretty good ball movement there by the Demons. Yeah, it was. They, uh, again, they've shown patches today, haven't they? They can move the ball really, really cleanly. Um, I really like the pressure from the Bombers around the footy. I mean, that was a certain goal there for North Hobart. Yep. And, uh, and uh, finished off well by Downham. But, you know, as I said, lots of green shoots today. Uh, there's, there's been some really, really good passages of play. And I'm sure that'll be a focus of uh, what the coach... Adam Bester talks from about after game, Dave. And I like the fact they're giving young uh, Wilbur McMurray there on debut. A bit of time in the centre. That's how he's going to learn. Absolutely. Matched up against Blade Sulzberger there. He's done some really good things today too in his, uh, you know, uh, certainly. Uh, whilst it might not be the result he wants from his first game, there's certainly been some good individual uh, results for him. 29 minutes gone. Just waiting for the footy to come back. Might uh, get a score at Canberra, if you've got a, a moment there, Rob. And I'll get some TSL as well. We'll get to the boundary umpire bringing the ball back. I'm up first here. I've got 11 7 73. Clarence to 3 4 22, the Blues. What only, we got, Canberra? Uh, only just come back after oh, half okay. time, still 48 to 29. A uh, minute right. and a half gone. In the middle, Charlie Meadows gets it to McMurray. Gets tackled, can't release. Umpire doesn't penalise him. Tested footy on the wing. Norton breaks out. Gets it to McCrimmon. Charlie Hasty kicks close to the boundary line looking for Leif Heber out of bounds. Salzberger a little bit ginger there getting up. It looked like he took a knock to his lower leg, but he's, uh, he's stretching out and he's moving all right now, which is great. So the Bombers will be up against Glenorchy next week, and both Glenorchy and the Bombers won't have their Devils players. We'll be back on Devils duty next week. Chance for some of those D-League players for the Northern Bombers today as the final siren sounds here at Utah Stadium. And big win in the end to North Launceston. 17-17, 1-19. They've defeated North Hobart 4-8-32. So a margin there of 87 points. Rob's got a list of goal kickers there he's going to go through. Yep, absolutely. Declan Chug leading all scorers on the ground with three. Two each to Brad Cox, Goodyear, Sam Simpson, Jack Ahern and Tony Aganis. And singles to Brandon Leary, Fletcher Bennett, Oscar Van Dam, Harvey Griffiths, Alex Lee and Oliver DiPoli Kubank. For North Hobart, pair of twos. Two to Josh Cleaver and two to Connor Downham. OK, we'll get groups of stats in a moment. He's just collating the, the last quarter there. So we're just uh, while we're waiting for Chris to get an interview there with one of the uh, North Launceston players, uh, just a comprehensive win for North Launceston. Never really challenged. Maybe the first half of the first quarter it was a little bit of an arm wrestle, and maybe in that third quarter North Hobart uh, pushed back a bit. But for the rest of the day, it's just a very strong performance from the North Launceston Football Club. Yeah, great summary there, Dave. And it's been a nightmare. I'm going to have to do some votes. It's, it's a nightmare to pick them out because it's you probably describe it as a really, really good team effort. Um, you know, it, it was just so even across the board. Uh, you know, we could go through that in, in some detail, which I will do later. But um, they just kept working and kept working and kept working. I love the fact, as I said, that Adrian uh, Smith said, you know, half time not good enough. I want you to lift your rating. And they came out and kicked uh, nine goals in the second half, nine goals, 11. And they left a few out there. So uh, he'd certainly be impressed with that lift in intensity. 
Absolutely. And to talk about players to come back in for North Launceston, I uh, just noticed over there we had um, Connor Young and Will Man and uh, they're, they're two players out injured at the moment. And uh, they're going to be great inclusions for North Launceston in coming weeks. I've got an interview down there. Chris Sayer, you've grabbed a young player down there. Who have you got? Yeah, I've got Theo Olopsy. Theo, how are you enjoying it down back? Yeah, it's, oh, no, it's a nice change. I think um, got some some good uh, some really positives we've taken away from today and across the first couple of games and yeah no I've just been really enjoying it yeah. But you still give it the freedom to run up the ground. Yeah no 100 percent I think our game plan is very aggressive and we like getting 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 as far up the ground as we possibly can so that we can remain nice and aggressive even if uh, the ball's not in our hands so yeah. Uh, and the good thing about your side today was the spread of goal kickers. Yeah, no, 100%. I think it just goes to show how much work we've put in in terms of our um, our team over the pre-season and, and, and really working together as a unit. I think all the boys are really good mates and, um, yeah, they just work in really nicely together. Yeah, so you, you seem really comfortable up, up back, don't you? You're having a great season so far. Yeah, look, I mean, <clears throat> I'm probably more of a natural defender as opposed to attacking, but, um, yeah, no, I just I think I just appreciate being able to use my size to my advantage, and, yeah, it's good. Next week, you're back here, and we are back here against Glenorchy. Yep, yeah, nah, look, I mean, as we saw last week, they've, you know, they come out and, and played a pretty strong game, so, yeah, back to the drawing board and prepare for next week. Well done today, and good luck for the rest of the year. Right, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was Theo Ives, uh, and uh, yeah, a very uh, likeable young champ, and uh, I think the side very happy. Absolutely, Chris. Uh, you couldn't see any major injury worries there for the Bombers going forward? No, not really. They all seem pretty fit. Um, uh, I think um, Alex Lee had a, was having a rest on the bench yes, there. Yes, wisely. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's uh, not getting on in your years, getting on in years. Uh, but uh, no injuries, and uh, uh, they'll be back next week full strength, I would imagine. Yeah, but as you said, I should have asked Theo about the Devils um, uh, players out next week. Yeah, there'll be about four or five, but uh, I think uh, Connie Young and Will Man Shannon, they're not far away from resuming, so I think they'll be able to cover those losses. Chris, thanks uh, for your efforts down there today. We'll let you... Go and get ready for your show. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. No worries. Chris is on Reeling in the Years on City Park Radio tonight from 5 o'clock. All right, uh, better players and 3 2 1 in a moment, Rob, but we might get to groups for the team stats before that. Okay. Yeah, hit outs North Launceston dominant there all day, 53 to 27. Um, but the clearances were even at the end of the game, 39 apiece. Inside 50s, though, big discrepancy, 61 for North Launceston and 35 for North Hobart as were the marks inside 50. So seven taken by the Demons and 24 over the course of the day by North Launceston. Intercept marks fairly even, 14 for the Bombers, 11 for North Hobart, and free kicks also pretty even. North Launceston with 14 and 15 for North Hobart. OK, gee, uh, you've been doing those stats a while, Groob. Is that, that 24 marks inside 50? Is that it's higher than normal, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's, a, yeah. that's an outstanding... Absolutely. Yeah. I don't, don't think we've seen that one for a while. Not too often. Not with that, not with that difference. Either. It's, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. They, Alex, they, they use the ball so well, absolutely. moving it from the back line uh, just so fluently. Yep. And always somebody free, making space for themselves. And, absolutely. Yeah. And that was in evidence today. And also, uh, Alex Lee, uh, 53 hit-outs to 27, you know, his dominance. And we shouldn't just put it all on Alex. Uh, Tony Aganis said some of those as well. Yeah, look, uh, I, I think, as I said, we watched a fair bit of uh, the Bombers last year. And, and one of the things where uh, Kingbra got over them is that they had two Alex Lees, if you like. Yep. Well, North, uh, North Launceston have now got two Alex Lees. So... Dominant performance there. Um, just revisiting uh, best players that you mentioned, Dave. I'm going to start with North Hobart. I thought Tyler McGuinness was probably their best four-quarter player. Uh, Isaac McCrimmon, really impressed with his work rate coming in. Uh, new recruit for them. Cohen Stevenson tried hard. Josh Cleaver, uh, I thought, was all right as well. Um, and Meadows, uh, you know, he, he battled yeah, manfully. He uh, a good show there in the ruck. If I went through the Bombers, I, I said the challenge for me in picking the 3 2 one was there were so many good players. Uh, uh, Oscar Van Dam, you know, I thought was dominant early. Theo Ives, who uh, we, we spoke to after the game, he's just been terrific back there with his athleticism. Declan Chug, I thought, uh, you know, was a really terrific four-quarter player. Blake Schulzberger, particularly early, was really, really good. Alex Lee, we've mentioned. I was very impressed, and you gave us a heads-up, Dave, about Oliver DePoli-Kubank and his abilities. He was terrific. 
Tony Aganis again, he's only going to get better playing at this level. He's come into from Longford. Fletcher Bennett, his usual reliable self down back. Um, and you mentioned them, I'm going to mention them as a group, Bale, Stingle and Nicholas. You know, they work so well in that back half. I mean, uh, Stingle did have some time through the middle as well. But my three, two and one, I, look, there's going to be some guys here who are very, very unlucky. I gave one to Theo Ives. I thought... Um, his effort down back was terrific. I mean, you look at the scoreboard and you say, ah, oh, well, North Hobart didn't have a lot of it. But they didn't have a lot of it because of guys like Ives and the hard work down back uh, from him. I gave two votes to Oscar Van Dam. I thought it probably halfway through the second quarter, he would have been close to the best person on the ground. He, he was working so hard off that half back line, kicked a good goal, set a lot of play up. I, we talked about the transition of the footy. Uh, and again, three votes. I thought a really, really good four-quarter player led uh, most goal scorers on the ground was Declan Chug. Not just for his three goals. Again, I don't know how many marks he took. I don't know how many assists he gave. But he just was a four-quarter player for them. He's relished that move forward. We've talked about how good he was as a set-up player down back for them. Uh, and for me, Dave, I've given him the three today. So one vote, Theo Ives. Two votes Oscar Van Dam, three votes Declan Chug, all from the Northern Bombers. And as I said, there's some other Northern Bombers players who are probably a bit unlucky to miss out. Well, as we said in the call, Rob, that, that was the switch this year between Declan Chug and Theo Ives. And they've both featured in the votes and they're both having really good seasons. Absolutely. I mean, and uh, Masterstroke. It's a great, uh, great position to be in, isn't it, when you can throw people from one end of the ground to the other and get a great result. Just uh, we'll wrap up in, in a minute. Uh, to, we didn't have a chance to reflect on that chat with Kath McCann at half time, but it was a fantastic talk to her. What, what an impressive individual, and you can tell the enthusiasm and the passion she's got for this, uh, this venture. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. And, you know, there were a couple of takeaways for me. She talked about a volunteer board so far, which, you know, again, these people are, are professional people. They're giving a lot of their time. The other thing, too, that she highlighted was how Tasmania has united behind this side. And for me, Dave, and I know all of us here at City Park love our sport, that to me is a really important takeaway. Let's get behind them. They're out listening to people. They're out talking to people. It's going to be a Tasmanian side for all Tasmanians. I had another takeaway, Rob. I'm getting a beanie and a scarf soon. Yeah, That's well, the other takeaway. I'm going to be jumping onto that one <laughs> as well because we'll need them when we're on that balcony at Windsor yeah, Park. Yeah. I might <laughs> wear them to a couple of Hawks games. See how, <laughs> see how, yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks very much uh, for everybody listening today on City Park Radio 103.7 and 96.5. Thanks to our sponsor, Elgas, for your support this year. Thanks to you, groups. Yeah, thanks, Dave. And you enjoy your, your next week off. You can give that larynx a bit of a rest. No, you don't I can. yell at anyone no, for be, a few days. It's that's right. No, nice. I'll be ready for North Fonson versus Gnorky. Right. Five to one next Saturday. And you'll be back with us too, Rob. I will. Looking forward to it. And just a very quick one now. Chris has joined us. Giants up 58 to 41 early stages. Well, they're point. hanging in with that three-goal margin. It's, it's achievable. <laughs> OK, thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks to Ron back in the studio today for getting us to air and getting that uh, great interview there with Kath McCann. Uh, and thanks to everybody here at Utah Stadium for setting us up this afternoon. That's all from us now here at City Park Radio and via, via the TSL live stream. The final score here at Utah Stadium, it was North Launceston 17-17-119, defeated North Hobart 4-8-32. Bye for now. You're listening to Tasmanian State League Football on City Park Radio.